Fred Payne, I'm the developer and primary instructor. Some people try to imitate me, I have to tell them that, you know, <laughs> uh, of Phoenix Vibrational Healing. And uh, I want to thank you and, uh, for coming out tonight. I'm grateful to be here in Columbus. And, and I want to thank uh, my sponsors, one, Heather Tapia, and my apprentices are here also. And I know that they're responsible for bringing many of you in here. These are some of my most advanced students. Uh, uh, in the country that I have here with me tonight and uh, most of them are sitting back towards the back of the room here I'm gonna bring them up here in just a moment and introduce them for you if I could and uh, uh, Bob Peters Kathy Schleyer both from Phoenix books uh, Jeff Wilson and his partner Beth Simon I'm grateful to them for uh, bringing some of you in here tonight and just whoever brought you thank thank them for us and um, so I, tonight you've been invited to a free introduction of Phoenix Vibrational Healing work and the first thing I want to do is I want to, uh, I would like to ask you this one thing. Since we're taping tonight, and thank you for participating in that to, to the extent that you will, um, I would like to ask that you either take your cell phones and turn them off or put a bomb vibrate if you don't mind. We don't want a cell phone going off here in the middle of this. So uh, the second thing is uh, I would like to introduce to you some incredible healers that you have right here in your community. And I know they're incredible because I taught them. So, <laughs> and I won't take credit for teaching them everything they know because these people have been learning the healing arts from numerous different sources, which I encourage all the time. So, you know, everybody, you can, you can stand to gain from everything you do, everything you take. And uh, another perspective is just, uh, a, you know, a good thing to have. So uh, I'd like to invite my apprentices up here now, if you would. I would like for you to come up to the front of the room. I want to introduce you. <clears throat> Lisa, come on up here. <clears throat> and the reason I want to introduce these people to you is because Fred Payne no longer does appointments. He hasn't basically done appointments for 13 years now. Uh, I found out that I was never going to sleep again. And so I had to... Uh, I had a bit of a life crisis and I decided uh, to, um, I had a reassessment of my life and decided that I would not do a lot of private sessions anymore because I lived out of Chicago land and central Ohio here for about seven or eight years and never saw my home and, and, and when I quit doing appointment work I had about 300 people signed up in advance and I was never going to get to the end of that list because everybody that I Everybody that I did an appointment for went home and called three friends and they got on the list and I just saw very quickly that I'm not going to be able to heal the world no more than any other individual is and uh, I am decided to not do the work but teach the work. So I've developed uh, some very advanced training uh, in lieu of doing appointment work and I would like to introduce to you now some phenomenal healers and another one is running the camera by the way. This is Mr. Paul Klinkner right here. He's uh, out of Pittsburgh. PA and this is Linda Wallace. She's from right here in the Columbus area. This is Olivia Hodorowski. This is TJ Ellis. This is Marilyn Schaub. This is Lisa Gatto. These are all, many of these people have healing practices other than the PVH work as well and are experienced in a number of different disciplines. So uh, I want you to know that they're available to talk to this evening uh, during the break afterwards uh, whenever we uh, cut for a while and that these people are highly experienced healers and they have a tremendous amount uh, to offer so uh, I just want you all to know that and uh, and you can question them there's materials I think there's some materials back on the table back here on the left and they belong to uh, my apprentices so uh, y'all are very fortunate indeed to have these people here in your community believe me because uh, you know there's not a whole lot of I only have about 120 apprentices throughout the entire country and you all have probably 12 or 15 of them here in the, in, in the Columbus area. And I also have an apprentice over here, two apprentices over here in the, in the Dayton area. So if you are from that area and you, need, you, you would like an appointment, you let me know and I will see to it that you get a phone number for somebody that can serve you over there. Cincinnati as well. So, uh, but at any rate, I want to thank you all for being with us here tonight. Thank you so much. And, uh, um, and I, I want to make, make you all available here to these people throughout the evening here. You can please feel free to walk up to these people, talk to them, find out their experience with PVH if you like. It's, you know, I mean, I hope they'll talk good about me. So, <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, they're having a good time. These people, uh, as they will probably tell you themselves, have 
been transformed by this work, and that's not, uh, that's not unusual. This work will transform you in a matter of minutes. We had a couple of people who got transformed just yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I, I'm from Kentucky. I talk funny. Does everybody understand Southern all right? <laughs> okay. All right. You don't. Okay. Well, we got a problem. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, at any rate, tonight you've been invited to a free introduction to Phoenix Vibrational Healing, and there's a number of things that I want to uh, go over with you here tonight. The, all of my sessions are both a teaching session. If you're into the healing arts, if you're interested in the healing arts, um, this is a place where you can learn something new. This is not, um, I, I basically think of Phoenix Vibrational Healing as a form of an outer mystery school. And it is a um, lot in life duty, obligation, uh, contract somewhere that I'd like to find and whatever to go back and access information back out of my own past lives or whatever where I studied in the sacred mystery traditions and bring them forth uh, in a public way that's not just strictly patriarchal uh, because 90% uh, of my students happen to be women. Uh, and so, and they're highly experienced and, and intelligent and uh, uh, insightful ladies and <coughs> the, you know what this is a good thing <laughs> what about that other 10% no, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> at any rate at any rate <coughs> it's okay if you swing both ways it doesn't matter to me All right. <coughs> we're going to treat you as an equal here so <laughs> glad to have you here tonight thanks for coming so, uh, at any rate, <laughs> you've taken me off track. <laughs> Y'all making me all hot already. Jeez. <laughs> at any rate, I, we'll, go, we'll go into Phoenix Vibrational Healing here a little bit. Phoenix Vibrational Healing is a, um, it's a multi-dimensional approach to healing. It addresses almost every aspect of the human body-mind field complex consciousness subconsciousness programming therein uh, uh, the mind and things that are controlling the mind things that are influencing the mind the thinking of individuals emotions and emotional difficulties and how to get charge out of your body uh, that's associated with emotions uh, that you have going on we are I guess we all know that there's a charge to it when you get pissed off you know what I'm saying so uh, you know, and, and, and it just kind of upwells in you, and that part of that is to get that charge off of there so that you don't have what we call a knee jerk reaction. You come into a place where you begin to respond to emotional stimuli instead of reacting to it. The whole idea is to respond. And you, of course, have different ways that you can go about responding to emotional stimuli, and one of them is you can still get pissed off. You know what I mean? And, and there is a place for anger. Don't get me wrong. You know, if it weren't for anger and our ability to express it, we would all be doormats. Do you understand what I'm saying? So sometimes you have to exert anger just to uh, defend your ground and stand up for your own personal empowerment. So, uh, you know, many new, new thought people think, well, you know, it's just not holy to get angry at somebody, but I have to beg to differ with that. Uh, it has its own, uh, it, it has its own assets and benefits, and beyond that, it's a cleansing agent. Anger is a cleansing agent, okay? So, but I'm diverging here for a moment, but understand that what I have tried to develop here and what I've been guided to develop is a, is a technology that can address almost every strata of the human condition. <clears throat> and, um, and so, there's some basic foundational information that I'd like to share with you tonight that gives you information about um, how this might go about working. How is it that this stuff works? There's very little information out there on the internet about this. There's very little information in books. Um, it's taken me near on 40 years now at this point to make these discoveries and empirically prove these discoveries. And by that, what I mean is that if you develop a new healing modality or a new technique, you apply it to the body-mind field complex, it gets results, it's therefore empirically proven. If it isn't, then it's time to discard it and get on to something else. I'm just not into temporary healing work. I'm not into in working on symptoms, I'm into getting down to the source and the root cause 
of problems and clear them out so that the individual doesn't have to deal with this any longer. Now, most of the work, and it can't ever be all of it because we're constantly being bombarded with traumatic incidents and, and uh, emotional incidents in our life, but the vast majority of the PVH work is permanent. Once the work is done, it's done. So you make that level again with each, uh, with each healing that is done. So, um, you know, it's, it's not a temporary thing. Now, that becomes a little harder to determine when you get into things like emotional issues because emotional issues seem to be in the field in layers. And so you think, okay, well, I, you know, and I did this. I thought I'd already dealt with my mother issues. You know what I mean? <laughs> Until... Uh, a very dear platonic friend of mine that I had been, basically my first apprentice kind of turned on me one day and I went into a rage for about four or five days and went home to clear myself for 40 hours and couldn't get rid of it all, you know, and uh, this was about almost 20 years ago and I learned some lessons from all of that and why was it that she triggered my mother's stuff? Because it was a totally platonic relationship here, you know, and it was just, it was just translating over into my own mother issues. And, uh, you know, I'd done a great deal of clearing work on that before, but understand that I had peeled off a layer and it appears to be dimensional. So you'll go so deep with a, cl a clearing of emotional issues and then that seems to like take out that layer of it and then all of a sudden the next ugly layer, deep, one, one level deeper seems to rear its ugly head and smack you in the face. And, and so then you wind up with uh, another layer of it. But understand what you already cleared is gone and you're not going to be dealing with that layer anymore and it's more in the emotional realm that this might happen the vast majority of all the other clearings that are done with pvh are permanent clearings unless it's going to be a result of something that's going to impress itself on you from without do you, if you understand what i'm saying and so we go through life and we have experiences uh, we might encounter something you know uh, from another individual or even something from the subtle realms uh, that can create a new problem for us at any old time. You know how that goes. And we're all dealing with a lot of uh, things like um, we're, we're having a planetary shift right now. I guess you know that. I mean, we're, ha we're being bombarded by this planet and the cosmos and the stars and everything else, you know. I mean, it's just, what, three weeks ago we had this mass coronal ejection that came out of the sun right towards the planet. It was, inter you know, this is when the AT&T phones went down. This is, you know, all this stuff, you know. I mean, every, it's, it's so powerful it's getting ready to blast satellites out of space, you know. And so you can't help but respond to that. This is creating massive solar wind hitting the planet. We're going through these things as the planet its own self is accelerating and it's bringing us to a point of light is what it's doing. So it's hastening our own, our own development, our own evolution. And as it does that, uh, we go through our own concomitant, uh, uh, you know, fits, <laughs> whatever you want to call them, uh, experiences. And I don't know how many of you have had some pretty serious emotional stuff come up over the last three weeks or not. I don't, anybody can <laughs> concur with that? Okay. <laughs> no one will raise their hand, but they're all back there giggling. Okay. <laughs> I understand how this works. Okay. So, and I mean, you know, I get an unprecedented, unprecedented number of crisis calls, of course, because of who I am. And since I don't do appointment work anymore, the vast majority of them are coming from my apprentices. So, you know, and, and so, you know, that's where, that's, you know, and so I have to assure people what's going on a little bit. But it's good to look at cosmic events that are going on as well, you know. Um, so we're all being impacted by this. Everything on the planet, the planet itself, everything is rising in what I call its baseline vibratory frequency. Uh, we think of ourselves as being third dimensional creatures and we're walking around here in a hard dense third dimensional body and uh, part of Phoenix Vibrational Healing as a matter of fact basically all of it is aimed at ascension technology. It is increasing your baseline vibratory frequency so that you can become in closer attunement with your light body which is above your physical body right now at this time. And so if you can get the the physical body raised in its frequency enough you can literally bring the light body down into the physical body and meld the two of them and that is what is known as the ascension you're spiritualizing physical matter that's the purpose 
of this work to a certain extent in addition to healing. And understand that every time you go through a healing, you increase in this baseline vibratory frequency. When you leave here tonight, you will not be the same person that walked in the door here at seven o'clock tonight, you won't. And you won't because your baseline vibratory frequency is going to take a shift and it's gonna take a shift upward. And this happens with every single clearing process that occurs in Phoenix Vibrational Healing and many other disciplines, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> this is the quickest way I know to go about doing it though. Now it gets to the point where <clears throat> you as an individual can get to the po point where you're vibrating at such a rate that your very presence in a room begins to affect other people. Because you're a human being just like they are and as a result of that, earth to earth, dust to dust, we're all made of the same elements and as I sit here and vibrate in this room, things are going on in this room, you see. And so it's been my purpose in life to get my vibrational frequency up so that I can do healing work. And so you're sitting in that field right now and I'm holding this field of intention in this room as well as my apprentices and so understand I also have millions, billions, quadrillions of sacred healing codes and symbols that are inherent in my morphogenetic field of my body and consciousness. And that field is stretching out further than the front door and you're sitting within my field. As you are sitting in the field of these apprentices that are sitting back here in the back of the room, so you are kind of like in a squeeze box. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, if you start feeling some spontaneous things going on this evening and you got, get kind of yancy or you get feeling like you need to breathe a lot or you feel short of breath or you start tingling all over or whatever may happen to you, please just be okay with it and go with it, you know. And I'm going to get right here off the, off the bat, right off the beginning. And that is, if you're having a healing experience, it has been determined by me that the fastest way to work through it while it is going on is to use what's known as the clearing breath. I call it the clearing breath. And this is a technique of circular breathing where you breathe in your nose and out your mouth. Okay? Now there's other forms of breath. One is called an integrative breath. We may experiment with some of that here tonight. I want to share something with you and show you a little something that's very interesting. But that would be the other way around. You would inhale through the mouth and exhale through the nose. But for the most part, this evening, what we're going to do is we're going to inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Now, you, you know, you, you're sitting here in a field of energy. You're not only sitting here in a field of energy, you're sitting here in his field of energy, in her field of energy, in his field of energy. And we're all sit, sitting here kind of making a homogenous uh, mix of vibrational frequencies. And so the more that we can all intend that we're going to have a major healing here tonight, the, the, the quicker we're going to get to a good healing, you know what I'm saying? So your intention is very powerful. You're a very powerful being, very powerful. We all are. And when tonight, it's, it's my hope that I'm going to explain to you one of the reasons why you are so that you'll grasp something here at the mental level, at the theoretical level that lets you see just how powerful and magnanimous a child of God you are. And so just know that you are for right now. And as we're sitting here talking about this, I felt a process come out of you as soon as I said that. So why don't we just take a couple of breaths here in through the nose and out through the mouth and just let go, just let go, okay? Now, while you're breathing, I wanna to talk to you about that, okay? I wanna make, make something very clear. There's a word that many people in the healing arts use, and they use the word release, all right? And so release means just this. Words have frequencies. They have energy. They don't just have meanings and definitions, okay? The word release technically means re, to do something over again. Lease, to take a leasehold. So basically, what the word release means 
is that I'm trying to let go of it, but in reality, what I'm doing is taking it back. So I used to get in the shower every morning, and I would stand there in the water, and I'd go, I hereby release, I hereby release, and I see all this water going through my body, and I'm intending all this light coming through my body, and I'm going to wash this stuff away and down the drain, and the next morning I'm back in the shower, I hereby release, I hereby release. So I found this out, and I was taught this by one of my good teachers, one of my great teachers, and you never use the word release. So I don't even want you to use it at the mental level when a clearing goes on here tonight, okay, please. Instead of release, I'm going to tell you what you can use. There's a number of different terms. The one that's probably closest to it is let go of. And uh, the other one is clear, dissolve, uh, transmute, Interestingly, there's another one that doesn't even make sense. It's very powerful. It's discreate. Understand that if you have created something in your life, you're a very powerful creator. I mean, you, you know, you, you, what are you? you? You're part of God, you're, and God is within you. How does, how does the creator create? He creates mentally. I'll go into that here in just a moment. But understand that if you create something, you should have the ability to discreate it, you see. So these things that you find in your life that taste bad, do you understand what I'm saying? These things that you find encountering, encountering in your day-to-day -day life, you have in one way or another created that in your life. And you have this incredible ability to discreate it. It just takes knowledge to do that. And there is ways to go about doing it. Believe me, there is. <clears throat> So, even though you won't find this word in a dictionary, it's a very powerful word of releasement. Now, you may hear me use the term release or releasement, but understand that when you're going through a clearing process, don't ever use it. Don't use it in an affirmation. You will wind up getting it right back. Now, I, here's another thing. I'll go into this just for a moment. Spirit only understands positives. Spirit does not understand negatives. Spirit is proactive. It does not know how to not do something. All right? So I'm going to explain this for you here just a little bit here. It may give you some clues about how you go about creating in your life. One of the ways that I used to go about creating in my life was I'd say with emphatic emotion, you know I'm never going to do blank. How many of you ever said that? And how many of you did blank? Ah, we're, yes, we're, get, we're getting the picture now. Okay, so understand that when you make an affirmation with that much oomph behind it, that much creative emotion, understand, emotion, energy in motion. That's what that means, you see. And so you give energy and motion to your thought, your word. And it goes out here into the creative ethers. It delivers back to you what you ask for. You see what I'm saying? And so, if you use that emotion to do that, understand that if you have a no, not, can't, don't, never, you understand in that sentence, then it gets left out of the sentence. So you sit here and you affirm to spirit that you are never going to do something, and basically what it amounts to is, I am going to do. You understand what I'm saying? So this is a little tip that you might find useful uh, as you go around creating, or miscreating as it may be. You see, because that's indeed what it is, is it not? See, these are just miscreations. And see, that's again another thing. You created it nonetheless. And you have an incredible capacity to be able to discreate it. Now, it's harder at the physical level because the physical level is the last level of the body to shift. Understand, it took us 40, 50 years. Of course, it only took you 20, but you know. We've had our whole lives here to create this stuff at the physical level, and so it's the last thing to shift. It's the last thing to alter, to straighten out, and to reconform itself. However, um, the energetic levels, all the energetic levels, or I call them energetic levels, in a minute I'm going to explain to you how they're not energetic at all. They're all physical levels are capable of shifting immediately in a matter of seconds. And you can confirm the clearing as soon as it's done. The breath will clear that out in a matter of seconds. So 
the idea is that the human subtle anatomy, let's go over this here for a moment, is here's my physical body and outside and interpenetrating that physical body is an etheric body that is the duplicate of the physical body. It interpenetrates the physical body. It's made out of ether. One of the densest substances in the world, technically, molecularly, because it's denser than steel. Well, it's hard to imagine something that's denser than steel that you're looking through, isn't it? But indeed, that's the case. And I'll go into this here in just a moment. Beyond that is a subtler body that we call the astral emotional body that is within several feet of our physical body. And you can even feel these things. I mean, you can... Uh, why don't you volunteer for me here for a second, you mind? I'm sorry, it's Jared, right? Yes. Why don't you sit right here? <clears throat> this is, this is it. I'm going to show you something. We'll, we'll do a little demo here real quick. What I'm going to do is, uh, I want you to rub your hands together real hard like this and get your hands warmed up here real quick. Just get them warmed up. And then when you get through, I want you to press in on your palms right here and kind of fire these hand chakras up right here. You see that? All right, just massage on that there for a moment. And the left hand is the receiving side of the body, and so it's the more sensitive side of the body. So if I come up on Jared's body, I feel his etheric body right here at the shoulder. It's right here. Okay, you'll feel something that feels almost viscous right here. You'll feel something that feels almost like it's material, like you're pushing against a balloon. Now, you've got a neighbor there. Go in on their shoulder right here, if you would, and with your left hand, and see if you can feel that. Just move in and out right here, and see if you feel something that almost feels like a bubble right there. Now, it'll be about three, four, maybe five inches off of the physical body, and this is a very good area to feel it. Okay? Do you, are some of you feeling that? Excellent. Okay. See, you just got to have somebody show you. See, if you've never experienced this before, I can show you things that are utterly mind-blowing in a matter of moments. And this is very simple right here, but I will show you something mind-blowing before this evening. Okay? And so it's very simple if you've got a teacher, if you've got a live teacher that can sit here and has already experienced all this. It took me years. It took me, I've been working at this for 40 years. But guess what? I can show it to you in a matter of minutes. In a matter of minutes and you just accelerate you just shift you just shift you just start vibrating faster and faster and you're doing it right now as I'm sitting here talking because I'm telling you about it and so breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth if you would and you can feel some things going on already can't you yeah now, if I come out here out of Jared's body and I go out here and I approach it from the outside again with this left hand and I put in here, I'm going to sense the outer limits, the membrane that separates his emotional body from his mental body. And I'm going to come in towards the body and it's right here. And so as I sit here and I press on it right here, and that's a very expansive emotional body. This man has a very expansive emotional body. And so do you feel something as my hand is moving right there? Like a pressure or something, something in time with my hand? Right around in here. All right, thank you. And so understand, I'm pushing on the envelope of the, of, the, of, the, of the outer level of this emotional body right here, you see. And so as I sit there and do that, he's feeling a pressure that's going on there in his body. I'm not sending anything out from my hand. All I'm doing is sitting there pulsating on the outside of the edges of it, you see. And he feels it. Well, what does this mean? This means that this right here is literal, physical matter. Now, if you're a healer, you may be calling this the human energy field. And you may think that it's energy. But I can assure you, it is not. It is literal, physical matter. Just a little higher dimensional physical matter. I'm going to go into this. You can all do this. You can all feel this. If I walk up to you and I start pressing on your emotional body, you can feel it. Now, when I get out here in the mental body, it becomes even more subtle, and people have to become even more sensitive to be able to feel that. But many people can. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. <clears throat> so, um, if it weren't physical matter, how would I be able to feel it? If it weren't physical matter, how could I push on it and I'd be six, eight feet away from him and him be able to feel it? Do you understand this point? See, this is really interesting. This is very little known in the healing arts. And this is the reason why I'm telling you this is very simple. Many energetic healers think that they are working on energy. 
Indeed, they may be working with energy, but they are not technically working on energy. They are working on literal, physical matter. And it's more than semantics when you get into thinking about that, because if a very powerful healer is placing their consciousness, their will, their intention, and their effort and energy and their focus on energy, they are missing the mark because what they need to be focusing on is literal, physical matter. And that's the reason why many healers are much less effective than they could be. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to explain a little bit about it to you here so that you can get a greater depth of understanding about it. Um, <clears throat> let me just take this off right here. We'll put a number of things up here on the board tonight so that you can, um, if, you, if you're taking notes, you'll have an opportunity to get these things down. Some people bring pads into my events, and this is, you know, a, a, t a teaching event. Everything I do is both a healing and a teaching event. This will also go on on Tuesday and Thursday night, and, of course, the workshop on the weekend. The place where it won't go on is in the group appointment next Tuesday night. That's solid wall-to-wall -wall healing all night long. That's like 80 or 100 procedures of healing. Bam, 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 one right after another, right after another. And I'm not going to be teaching that night. I'm just going to get down and dirty. You know what I mean? We're just going to get the biggest healing we can get in one night in our lives, okay? And that's, that's what that event amounts to. There are seven different levels of physical matter as known by the ancients. And the ancients were incredibly intelligent. As a matter of fact, we've kind of made them out to look like idiots here with all of our scientific knowledge and scientific theorems here in the early 1900s. And we forgot where we came from in many instances, but the primary type of physics uh, prior to the early 1900s was ether physics. Uh, the leading scientists of the day were ether physicists. It wasn't until Einstein came up with the general theory of relativity in the early 1900s that it superseded ether physics. It, as it turns out, Einstein's calculations were wrong and they're being proven wrong every day by leading edge physicists. Even now, if you're not familiar with this, you can certainly look into it and it will be easily proven to you. Just go look into it in the, on the internet. And Einstein himself admitted that, you know, before his death, that the key to all matter, energy, time, and space basically was actually in ether physics, but this was not well publicized, you understand. Now, Einstein, he came up with a little formula right here, didn't he? He came up with uh, E, energy equals mass times the speed of light, which is C squared. And so basically what we can do here is take a very simple equation that he came up with, understand and say, we're not concerned about calculating how much energy and mass it is. So we're going to knock out the speed of light squared and energy equals matter. Understand in math, you know, we know that everything that's on one side of an equal sign is equal to what's on the other side of an equal sign. So we can take the whole equation and turn it around. And now we've got matter equals energy, don't we? <clears throat> Now, so at some level, energy becomes physical matter, but it's not, it's not happening so much in the human energy field. It's happening at a level that is so subtle, and that energy is the, basically what's known as a field of potential. That field of potential is guided by the mind, all right? That's what develops that field of potential. Now, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to give you a little bit about this right here. And I go over this. I went over this yesterday. The densest form of physical matter is what? Solid. Pardon? Solids. Solids. Thank you. She was here yesterday. <laughs> Solids. The, the next is liquids. We know this from, you know, we know this from, and then gases. Right. We know this from elementary school science, don't we? We know about solids, liquids, and gases. And so by the time you get to gases, we're sitting here looking through them and your eye can't even register them without smoke or some colored gas in there or whatever. So understand that our, si our senses are only able to recognize basically solids and liquids. They only vibrate and register the vibrations in the light spectrum of, that, of those two substances. We, now we're breathing in the air and you can tell it because you have apparatus to breathe it with. But other than that, you can't sense it, can you? You can't sense those gases very much, See, unless you get helium, of course. It makes you talk really weird. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> the fourth level of physical matter is, has been discovered by science, and it's known as plasma. 
And they have recently discovered that there's another gradient of plasma. There's now two levels of plasma, one rarer than the other. But the ancients knew this as ether. And so the, the next level of physical matter is ether number one. I call it, okay? Now this is the equivalent of, in the human body of the etheric body, which is interpenetrating the physical body and moves out. You felt it there on somebody here just a moment ago, right here it is on this gentleman, okay? It's radiating outside of the body, the physical body. This is not the auric field. I want you to know that. This is what you're feeling there is not the auric field. I'm not going to go into that right now. It's an entirely different animal. But it is not physical matter. The, the, the auric field is not physical matter. It's an electromagnetic emanation from the body. <clears throat> and so this is the basically uh, the third and fourth dimensional bridge, the etheric body. All right, And it is the equivalent of what we call the etheric body. And it is the transition zone between the third and the fourth dimension, basically. Okay? So you're basically like a battery, like a generator, a transducer. You transduce down energy, matter, space, and time from well out here in your field in what is known as the creative ethers. And you transmute it down, you transduce it down like a step down transformer, and it becomes denser and slower, denser and slower, denser and slower, denser and slower, until it becomes this physical body. So you are literally making your physical body right now, right here where you sit. And the fastest way in the world to alter what's going on with your physical body is to alter what is getting ready to be you next. And that's out there, you see. And so you can sit here and watch somebody go through a massive clearing and watch them transform in front of your face. In front of your eyes, you can watch people utterly transform. Their entire appearance will change in some instances. <clears throat> Now, the next level out of physical matter, and to understand we're still talking about physical matter here, is ether number two, and that is what we call, that is fourth dimensional physical matter, and it is basically what we call the emotional astral body. It's within four, five, six feet of the physical body, and it can expand and contract just at will, depending on what somebody's thinking, depending on what some mood somebody's in. If somebody gets in a, a pissed off mood or whatever, they contract it up around them, don't they? They harden up their own field. So you have control over this field of matter that's around your body, you see. <clears throat> and then we go into the next level of physical matter is uh, ether number three. And this is basically fifth dimensional physical matter, one more time. And you think, okay, it's fifth dimensional. It doesn't seem to be physical to me. Believe me, it's physical. This is not it's just subtle stuff or energy. And this is the equivalent of what we call the mental body, which is outside of the emotional body and may stretch as far away from our field as 15, 20 feet, you see. All right. And this is the realm of concrete analytical thought, see? So that is thought. Now this one up here obviously is emotions. And so emotions are literal things. They are physical things, see? And, and so is thought. And we've been told many times, thoughts are things, right? Well, they literally are. They're literally things. They're physical things. All right? And so the next level of physical matter we call ether number four. This is not in a book that I'm aware of at all. It took me a while to put, come up with this. This is six-dimensional physical matter. It is the realm, uh, it's equivalent to what we call or what has been named the causal body, C-A-U-S-A-L body, or higher mental bodies, and it is the realm of feelings. Now, isn't this interesting? Up here we have emotions, and down here we have feelings. And feelings are even subtler than emotions. 
And yet we use the same words to describe both of them, don't we? We're either angry or we're resentful or we're experiencing grief or guilt. Or we're, Do you understand what I'm saying? And you feel guilty or you have an emotion of guilt, etc. And so we use very similar words to describe both feelings and emotions. But I want to tell you, they are not the same thing. And feelings actually precede emotions. So one of the ways that this happens, and if you'll just follow along with me here for a moment, is something will occur to you. You'll get a hit. You'll get a thought that'll come into your head. Just prior to that thought coming into your head, there will be this little blank space in time. It seems to be microseconds. It's like while the, the wheels of creation are sitting there churning, and then boom, you get a thought, right? And it's that little blank right there before that thought occurs to you when you are feeling it, okay? And it's literal physical matter that's moving in order to do that. And then that thought may evoke an emotion in you or an emotional response, you see. And this is how we create, you understand. It comes in from the outside and densifies and densifies and densifies. And this is everything that we experience, including thought processes, you see. Yeah. This is really like intuition. Is it like what? Intuition. Intuition. Is this like intuition? This is the question. Intuition is just part of all this process. Yes, it is. And so what, what do we do with our intuition? We feel into things, don't we? It's more of a feeling. You know, me, I can't claim that I'm a psychic. People will call me a liar. But understand, I don't bill myself as a psychic. I mean, I've, 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 I've downloaded a tremendous amount of information from spirit, and I've developed 10,000 healing techniques. And so you say to yourself, how can you not be a psychic? People say, you've got to be a psychic. But the fact of the matter is, is that I am clairsentient. I don't see things. I have a knowingness of things. And so it's less clear to you when you don't see something or hear something. That's called clairaudience. Like your guide's talking in your head. You know what I'm saying? And say, so people, there's people back there in the back of the room. They are. They are. They're, they're psychic. They're, a lot of those women are psychic and they're clairvoyant. You know? And I have friends and apprentices that are incredible psychics. They make a tremendous living off of being psychic. You know? And being able to look into your field and tell you about yourself. But the fact of the matter is I don't consider myself that. So I get a knowing, a knowingness. And this is very much like having a feeling, you see. That's very much what it's like, having a feeling. It's like I don't hear a voice or anything like that. I rarely see an image or a vision, although I'm getting a little better at it. You know, I am, you know, after you know, only, only 40 years of practice, you would think I'd gain something. But, <laughs> but I have clear... Uh, what they call clairsentience, where I have a knowingness. And I'm doing it with my feelings. I'm doing it with my feelings. So it either feels right or it doesn't feel right, you see. Now there's also a, a physical counterpart to that called kinesthetic response, where your literal body either gets a feeling of right or wrong, and you just know it in your own, in your own physical substance. And basically what you're doing there is you're doing... Um, kinesthetic dousing. You're literally dousing with your own physical substance of your body. You're doing biokinesiology. Now it's not until you get past these seven levels of physical matter right here that you get into the realm known as spiritual matter. And in this is a tremendous hint about reality that is very deep that you might want to consider. And spiritual matter is organized by mind. Through awareness. Through awareness. Pure awareness. This mind is not the same one that you think with. This is the pure, unadulterated mind of God, basically. And so it is a field of potential, of pure awareness, out of which matter can descend and manifest. And so therefore, it is below or above, as you would put it, the level of physical matter. Now there's a great deal to be said about this little chart right here. And there's a lot that you can learn from this little chart right here. This is what we call, what we call, 
physical matter right up here. This is what science. S I C A L. That's what that's what science considers to be physical matter right there. Those first three levels of what is really indeed physical matter, but there are four more levels of physical matter. Now. Uh, <clears throat> The interesting thing is, here is your etheric body. Here is your emotional body. Here's your mental body. Here's your causal body. Your causal body is six-dimensional physical substance. Have you ever thought that you're a master of the sixth dimension? You ever thought about that? Have you ever thought that if your literal body is comprised of it, that you must have control over it? Or it wouldn't be part of your body? Do you ever think about that? I understand. And so understand that you are already a master through six levels of physical matter, six dimensional levels of physical matter. You already are because you are it. And therefore you feel, therefore you create there. Therefore, if you create there, you can discreate there. So you're already working throughout the sixth dimension. Amazing. And we think, oh, well, I'm just a third dimensional fellow, a country boy walking around on the earth. But we're not, you see. We're not. We're multidimensional beings. And this is part of it right here. Okay? Now, Yeah, I feel that, don't you? Let's breathe. In through your nose. Will, choose love to let go while you do that. And uncross your legs, if you would, because actually what's happening is you're shorting out your meridian system when you do that. Your arms, if you've got your arms all crossed, just uncross everything and breathe a little bit. In through your nose, out through your mouth, with the intention and will to let go. Let go of anything willing to go now. <laughs> One little help. Anchor lock seal. Thank you, creator of all that is. Now breathe. There you go. Whew, breathe. Good. Gosh almighty. Yes, ma'am. Um, I came in with a raging migraine. Yes. Um, right before you did that, um, it's been... It's gone. Yeah. She came in with a raging migraine right before I did that. It's now gone. This is... Do what? That's because you took an Advil. She took an Advil. <laughs> <laughs> Must have just been timing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> this man would this man destroy your good dream right here. Oh, what am I going to do with him? <laughs> do what? I think it's both. Yeah, it may be. Yeah, I'm sure it is. My question is, with all these dimensions, how do I benefit from that? You benefit from knowing about this as a theory because it allows you to place, how do, I, how do I benefit from that? That's this question. Understand that everything that we become aware of, we begin to get to the point where we can mold this pure awareness down here, this field of potential. We, some people call that the zero point field, the zero point energy field. Some people call it the mind of God. Some people, do you understand what I'm saying? It is the all, it is the all, you see. It is the all from which everything else is created. And so the more you understand about the mechanics of how this process operates, the more effective you become, consciously and unconsciously, at molding physical matter or dismolding it, discreating it, transmuting it, and being free of it. That's what the healing arts is all about. It's a matter of becoming aware and stepping up your level of awareness. You can do nothing about anything of which you are unaware. One of my favorite statements. You can't. How are you going to, be, how are you going to respond to it if you're not aware of it? Do you see what I'm saying? So awareness is the first step in gaining control. That's the first, that's the first point at which you can begin to do something about something. If you don't have it, you can't. And that's what it is a matter of the healing arts to do, is to gain a higher level of awareness. Now understand, you know, we all have our own level of what we call reality, don't we? We've got this picture of reality. 
It's this little picture that we've got right out here in front of us. And if we get presented with something like Fred Payne, who is talking about all of this totally weird stuff that I've never heard of before, then what you do is you take that Fred Payne information right there, that Phoenix Vibrational Healing information, and you compare it, don't you? And you compare it to that picture that you have of reality, don't you? And through your awareness, you try to figure out, okay, does this fit? Does this make sense? Is, is, this, is this clicking? Is this not clicking? Do I need to accept this as part of my new reality? Or do I need to kick this out the door and get on down the road and find something that does? We all do this, don't we? But understand that when you hear revolutionary information that basically sounds to you like it resonates or it begins to become incontrovertible fact as quantum physics is proving right now. See, many people are unaware of, of the things that are even being discovered in quantum physics laboratories right now, you see. Just understanding that can raise your level of awareness massively. See, see, there is no time, there is no space. You say, well, that's a bizarre concept. I can't embrace that in that reality, can I? After all, you know, I see the clock going around, and I, but that was a man-made creation, wasn't it? And then I also see me moving through space, don't I, you see? But the only place that time and space is applicable is here in a third-dimensional body. And so guess what? You're no longer in a third-dimensional body. You think you are, but you're not. See, you're, you're, you're more than 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 3.95, 6, 7, 3.97 is your dimensional level right now. And hold, hold your arm up here for me and resist. 3.97, 3.98. No, 3.97. We're going to just wake up one morning and your body's just not going to be here anymore. And instead of getting out of bed and walking uh, through the door, you're going to go over here and just walk through the wall. When's that going to happen? <laughs> When's that going to happen? <laughs> Folks, you're not far from it right now. Do you realize how close you are to walking through wall technology? Do you, do you realize this? This is not a third dimensional being I'm looking at right here. None of you are. And people who have been working on themselves at conscious levels are so close to hitting the fourth dimension and shifting in time and space into a place where time and space no longer has any consideration. Does time seem the same now as it did when you were a child? No, no, no. Do you know literally the, the, the earth is accelerated so much right now at this time that we basically have probably not 30% of the time that we did when I was, you know, born. Now, this is only 30 years ago or so. So, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You know there's not as much time left in a day, don't you? Everybody's rushed. Everybody's pushed. Everybody's got to get this done. Everybody finds, oh my God, I'm so pressed I can't get it all done. That's because there literally is less time in a day right now than there ever was. And so when's it going to get to the point where time is just breached and you're not... And okay, here's, here's another one. Have you ever set out on a journey? This happens to people very often when they're in one of these events with me. They'll go through a little healing or something, and then they'll go home, and they know it takes them 40 minutes to get home, but they'll be home in 20 minutes, and they'll be scratching their head <laughs> trying to figure out, how did I do that? Have you ever had an experience like that? Have you ever decided that you're going to some place, but you're running late, so instead what you're going to do is you're going to stretch time, right? You do it all the time. I know you do. And you get there right on time. The appointment's there, you know. You know there's no humanly possible way that you can get there. Uh, folks, I was down in Louisville, Kentucky about two years ago, and I had a semi sitting over here on this side of me. I was getting ready to pull out onto a major four or five lane highway and get onto an interstate right here. Here sits a rig without a trailer on the back of it, right? And, and, and no, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, had, it was a rig without a trailer on it. Yeah, my partner and I were in the car. The rig starts to take off and he guns his motor and he jumps the motor ahead and everything and I'm on this side of him. I can't see what's coming down the road. I figure, hell, if the rig's going, I'm going, right? So the rig stops. Bam! By the time my body can respond and I can get the brakes on, my, my whole front end is sitting out in the road in a pickup truck with a wagon on it about 20 feet long, with a trailer on it about 20 feet long, goes through the front of my automobile, not three feet off of my windshield. Oops. 
I never felt anything. We're both sitting there scratching our head. <laughs> you know, I've got friends that can vibrate so fast that they can turn invisible and no. you can't see them. <laughs> you know, I have another friend. She's up in Wisconsin. She lives off a of light. She didn't eat a single bite of food for over two years. And she didn't shrivel up and dry up and blow away, neither. She became a breatharian living off of light. Yeah, but her husband died. No. <laughs> she continued to feed him. And then he threatened, to, he threatened to leave her, so she had to start eating again. You know? Can you imagine not having a bowel movement for two years? I can't. There are people on this planet that can do this, folks. I can assure you there are. And there's people that, that, that don't get in accidents because something disassociates and runs through the front of their automobile. That's time and space. That's the breach in matter and energy. That's the things that you can't explain. I came to her last night and did a healing on her. Guess what? I got a great night's sleep. I must have been working in some other dimension, right? This is what she tells me. She got a massive healing last night. Pain came up in her body and it just completely went away. And she hadn't had it since. Fred was there. I mean, you know, how many of my apprentices back here will tell you I've been with them in their sleep? You know, I must be one hard worker and one hard-headed guy because I'm never getting rest, right? So, you know, I mean, everybody tells me this. So I'm sitting here in bed just chilling while I'm out there working somewhere, see? And you probably are too. You probably are too, see? If you're in the healing arts, you more than likely are, see? So there's no time and space ultimately, and you just got, and so if time and space is only a matter of the third dimension, and you're almost ready to just flip right now, you're almost ready to flip, see? then you're getting to the point where you're starting to manipulate time and space. You indeed are. You think about it. You think about the instances in your life where you have literally manipulated time and space. You either didn't go the right amount of distance and you got there anyway or whatever. You had time that was missing and, you know, all kinds of things got done nonetheless, whatever. You know, give it some thought. What about questions right now? Okay, I'm thinking about that. No one has one. Okay. As yeah. far as working on people going out of your body, a lot of healers I know, a lot of people will wake up in the middle of the night. Is that because you need a break from going out and healing? Have you, or is there a I think I, there's a lot of things that go on at night. That's a good question. I think that are disturbing us, for one. Um, I think we're being disturbed by frequencies that are coming off of whatever system that is going on. Uh, there's a harp system up in Alaska, you know, that's putting out bizarre frequencies and vibrations. Uh, you know, uh, televisions and all kinds of other things are putting out bizarre frequencies that impact the human energy field. So I think that's part of it. Um, I, there's, there's all kinds of scenarios in that regard, though. There's, you know, um, you could be just waking up because you've been on a healing journey somewhere and now you've gotten back. There's a multitude of explanations for it, I suppose. Have you ever uh, gone through a period of your time in your life where you kept waking up the same time every night? Yes. Exact same time. I mean, 444. Yeah. 444. Was it? Okay. Yeah. That was mine, 444. You know? Mine was four. I mean, there's got to be a reason for that, right? I, I can't answer all those questions, though. I mean, you know, I'm not psychic. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, sir. The dimension that you mentioned we're going to go into, could that be the fifth dimension? We're going, uh, first, uh, initially, we will probably be transitioning over into the fourth dimension. At which point we will be, uh, we, uh, is it the fifth dimension we're going into? This is the question. Uh, which will be uh, probably for a short period of time until we move on into the fifth dimension. I think what, what's going to happen? Okay, so what happens when you hit the fourth dimension? There is no time, there is no space, and you're, and you're not capable of being lied to any longer. So you begin to see fact for what fact is. You begin to see through illusion, do you not? You see. You begin to see the things that have deluded you. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you begin to see things for how they really are and what they really are. So this is also going to uh, uh, 
accrue a massive amount of awareness, which is going to cause us to move very quickly through the fourth dimension, more than likely, and into the fifth. Yes, sir. That's my opinion. Do you concur with that? Wonderful. Thank you. I taught a class called Genesis to the Fifth Dimension. I started teaching it in about 1982. I quit teaching it in about 1990 when I went over and did this for a full-time practice. I had my first business I had when I was 26 years old, and, and I taught on the weekends. I was a weekend spiritual warrior for many years, you know. But I've been teaching since I was 22. So I developed this course called Genesis to the Fifth Dimension. And that's one of the things that it explained. How did we get here? Where are we going? What's going to happen when we hit that point? Yeah. And that's my opinion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Other questions? So what happens? Yes, ma'am. Is there sometimes a situation where you're creating and you're just creating at the same time? For example, if you're conflicted, desire versus that nature? More than likely, yes. And one of the things that we do is we provide our own blockage to the situation. Can you create and discreate at the same time? Yes, I believe you can. And there's other, there's other factors going on there. Uh, le let me explain something to you here. This is, uh, this is out of more advanced levels of Phoenix Vibrational Healing. I want to explain something to you. Did you know that your future that you have already created for yourself is out here in front of you right now? Are you familiar with that? You, you have an awareness of that? Understand that with every step you take forward, you are moving into the future, okay? Every single step that you take forward. So you're moving in time and space, and you're moving into your future. Somebody volunteer here for me for just a moment, and we'll come on up here, huh? And we'll do a little demonstration, okay? We'll do a little demo here. What's your name? Deb. Deb. All right. Come over here if you would. And what we're going to do, let me check your arm, Deb. And, I and, one today, so I'm Oh, did you? Well, then let's use this arm. How's that? That's a good thing. Yeah. I want you to hold up and resist as I push down. Hold. Think yes for me if you would and hold. Think no for me if you would and hold. Excellent. So that's we. This body's clear to give and receive 100% true and accurate information now. And hold your arm, please, and hold. That's a yes. So she, she can be looked into right now. I can examine a muscle on her body, and, and her body will tell me anything I want to know. If it's not clear, she will give me 180 degrees wrong information. This is what I'm going to be teaching in my very first workshop this coming weekend. How to get somebody to tell you the truth. How do you get their body to tell you the truth? All right? All right. Now, this is, let's, let's just check, Deb, for this. Uh, say for me, I'm, I'll move into the future. Nope, I'm moving to the future. I'm moving to the future. With safety. With safety. Confidence, protection, and power. Confidence, protection, and power. And let's look at the arm here and hold it up, please. Hold. That's a big no, wasn't it? <laughs> that arm lost. I lost that arm. That arm went somewhere. Huh? I couldn't even say the words. I understand. Okay, so she couldn't even say the words. Uh, I want to know how many subconscious programs are lodged in the subconscious mind of Deb right now that are blocking her ability to move into the future with safety, confidence, protection, and power. And that figure is more than a million and hold. Hold up. More than five million and hold. More than ten million and hold. More than 20 million and hold, more than 50 million and hold, more than 80 million and hold, more than 100 million and hold, more than 200 million and hold, more than 300 million and hold, and it drops at 300 million. So it's somewhere between two and 300 million. Just a couple. You know what I mean? Just a couple. Just a couple. All right. So let. All right. So let this. Okay. So I told you when you move forward, you move into the future, didn't I? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate that to you right now. And so I want you to come right over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a leisurely walk right over there towards that wall. But I'm going to hold your arm up here, and I want you to hold it up as much as you can as we take a walk. Just keep moving that way. Just walk slowly, and I'll walk right beside you. And you can't keep the arm up, can you? No, I've got one finger on your arm. And your arm keeps sinking, Deb. It keeps sinking. Okay.
So understand that she is walking into her future and her own energy field is collapsing around her body right now. So what happens when that happens? She's going to be walking down somewhere someday and she's not going to be understanding or seeing what she's doing because her entire energy field is collapsed around her and she's going to fall and have an accident. This is how accidents happen. People can't walk. Do you understand what I'm saying? They can't walk without their whole energy field collapsing. All right, let's. let's I, I'm going to show you another demonstration here. All right, this is the future. Would you come over here and stand in it, please? Yes, the future is bright. Oh, I need my sunglasses. And so I want you to hold your arm up, please, and hold. And this is weak, isn't it? Step out of the future into present time over there, if you would, and hold, hold up. Now come back here and step into the future and hold. And no, the arm is weak. Understand, uh, what made this the future? You said it was. That's right. A very powerful creator, son of God, said that it was. And so therefore, it is. And if you come up here and stand in it, and you can't stand in the future without your whole energy field collapsing, it will collapse. And understand, I'm no different than you. And you can do the exact same thing. And so that is not present time up there. That is the future. Okay? So what I'm going to do, uh, let's... You want to do a clearing? Yes. All right. Go on back to your seat. And we'll come. Let's check. Yes, 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 yes. Present time. Okay. Uh, do we need a short break? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the question that keeps coming to her mind is, what is the point of our human journey? That's the question I've got to. Would you answer that for me, please? No. <laughs> We all have that question and understand that I can sit here and go into that question probably for the next three or four weeks and I won't get a presentation done tonight. So I'm, I'll, you'll have to pardon me if I don't address that. Uh, it is magnanimous. The answer to that question is magnanimous. And I'm not even sure that we can understand it fully and completely living in a human body that's this dense and physical right now at this time. And so, I mean, how do, you know, how do you know the mind of God, the one infinite creator of all that is, that is, uh, you understand, it's just like trying to interpret what, it, what, is, what is God? What is, what is the one infinite creator of all that is? So, it's, everybody's got an opinion. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, everybody's got one of them too. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, so, huh? That would be my question. Yeah. If you have all these emotions and thoughts and everybody in this room has a, a, the same thing, they're all pressing against yours, you're pressing against theirs, then what? Then what, what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> I'm not sure I understood that question. We're all sitting here influencing each other. Uh, the very right. vibrational field of everybody in this room is sitting here making a homogenous whole. Who's you know, be the, one? Uh, the one that the one that can sustain and maintain their own field, the integrity of their own field, is the one that's going to be the dominant one. When I've got a group going on like this, it's my intention that I'm holding a field of energy in here. It's a field of healing. It's a field of intention that you're in. I'm trying to be the one that is the dominant one that is holding the field that is in this room. And my apprentices are back here helping me do that as well right now. Because they want to see you get your highest healing here tonight. That's the purpose of tonight. That's the purpose of everything we do that in Phoenix. You to, uh, Catholic Queen of the is that, is that right? Okay. Is she, are, we in, are we being held in her field tonight? I understand. Okay. I'll have to get to know her. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to introduce me to the queen of the universe. This sounds good. Sounds good. Is she already spoken for? Is the question I've got. No. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Why don't we take a short break here for a few minutes? The, bath <laughs> the bathrooms are outside uh, to the right, I believe, and we'll just take a short break. I want to tell you, Claire Sentience is one of the psychic gifts. I know it is. Okay. I know. And it's, it's more annoying. accurate than Claire Audience and Claire... Right here, I hope uh, you got, some, got to the bathroom, got you some water and so forth. Water is extremely important. Um, 
9961 dry dyno intensifying magnifying clock seal. Thank you, creator of all of this. I guess we'll clear that water now. So maybe one of my apprentices did that for me before before already, you know what I mean? <clears throat> um, at any rate, uh, I, I do want to do this clearing. I, I want to do it for all of you because um, we can all benefit from getting cleared so that our energy field doesn't collapse as we move into the future. But before we do that, I want to go in and, and give you a couple of other explanations uh, about how all this works because it'll help build an awareness that you will then be more able to participate in, okay? So one of the things that I want to go into very quickly is the foundations for vibrational healing. As far as I'm concerned, it is basically the only kind of healing, and it is the attempt of every form of healing modality to accomplish vibrational healing. But many people do not understand how it works. So I'm going to give you the very simplest explanation that I have for how vibrational healing works. I'm going to do it by drawing a little diagram up here on the board for you. <clears throat> Um, as we know in um, physics, we, I mean this is all physics, this is not, this is not uh, some airy-fairy thing here that got cooked up by, you know, somebody or anything, but it's, 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 it's literal fact. This has been proven by science. Everything has a vibration. The only difference between the vibration of this water right here and the vibration of this wall is the rate at which it is vibrating. Everything is in movement. This is one of the great hermetic principles. The hermetic principles are uh, some of the deepest knowledge that has ever been revealed to mankind. Unfortunately, schools of hermetic wisdom have long ago been basically forgotten. And so, we, I mean, you know, the library at Alexandria burned down, you know. So, uh, but at any rate, that is the knowledge of the ancients. And so it's the principle of vibration. There's another major principle. These are known as cosmic laws as well. Okay, and what are cosmic laws? They're the laws of God. They're the laws of nature. They are the laws of how things operate. Okay, and so if you start operating in accordance with cosmic law, you start finding that things start being accomplished. They get, they get accomplished. You start doing things. In other words, the only difference between one vibration and another, happiness and joy, you understand what I'm saying, and depression and sadness, etc., is all a matter of this vibrational state that's being exuded by the body. The other, another very important uh, principle that is spoken of, and it's the number one principle in the hermetic wisdom, and that is the law of mentalism what's known as the law of mentalism. And what that law states is that everything in existence is a result of a mental creation, the creation of mind. Now that's something that the Kabbalion does not tell you, that it is the creation of mind. We think that it is the creation of the human mind in its activity of thinking. It is not just that mind, okay? I just wanted to let you know that. So there's several different principles. There's seven primary principles in what are known as the hermetic wisdom. This information is available in a book that I have read at least 20 times. And each time that you read this book, and it's available online for nothing, as a download on an ebook because it's OP, uh, each time you read this book, your level of awareness is going to reflect off of this book and you're going to understand it at deeper and deeper levels because you have to read between the lines of this book. This book is not just, it's a very simple book, it's about half inch thick and the name of the book is The Kabbalion. And so I'm going to write that up on the board there for you if you ever want to go take a look at it. But uh, Kabbalion, K-Y-B-A-L-I-O-N. I not only talk funny, I write funny too. Okay, so uh, I used to be in the engineering field, so I'll, I'll write very architectonically. I hope you can read that. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, at any rate, these are two of the primary laws, cosmic laws, the law of vibration, the law of mentalism. There are others, the law of cause and effect. For every cause, there's an effect. For every effect, there's a cause, okay? Um, that's what you would call the law of karma, or many people call the law of karma. Now, the easiest explanation I have for you on how vibrational healing works is very simple. Uh, we, we, when we track a vibrational frequency, 
we recognize something like a sine wave. This is known as a sine wave. It's the easiest and most simplified form of a vibrational frequency. You can see this on an oscilloscope as it is tracking a frequency. All right. And so the object is, let's just say that this sine wave is the, is the equivalent frequency. Here is the frequency. It is the distance between the top of the waves right here. We would call that the frequency. This right here is the amplitude. That's the, that's the distance between the trough and the peak of the wave. We call that the amplitude of the wave or the amount. If it's in sound, that is the loudness of the sound. Okay? You understand. So now, if let's just say that this is the frequency for chlorine, a toxic substance in the body that we take in when we drink chlorinated water, when we take showers and bathe, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right? We know this is a toxic substance for the most part, although we still have to have chlorine as well in some capacity, limited capacity, you see, because your stomach uses hydrochloric acid hydrogen and chlorine in order to digest your food. It creates and makes hydrochloric acid to do that digestion process with. However, understand that we're getting too much chlorine in our body, so people are becoming chlorine poisoned, right? So you want to get chlorine out of the body when you've got an overabundance of it, more than the body can use to make hydrochloric acid and the other needed nutrients in the body. So what you do is you feed in an opposite wave signature. This we call the counter wave signature. This counter wave signature is the exact same frequency and the exact same, same amplitude in reverse phase. And that wave looks like this. You see, it's 180 degrees polarized in the other direction. Now, this is very much like having a, an acid up here and having a base down here, this would be like mixing up vinegar and baking soda, and when the two of them come together, what do they do? They have a reaction and they offset one another until you get a neutral pH and the substance is balanced, right? This is exactly how this works. Every form of vibrational healing is aimed at finding this one thing right here, right here, the counter wave frequency. Now in homeopathy, which is extremely powerful vibrational healing, this counterwave frequency is known as the X potency or phase. And there are many homeopaths that don't even fully understand that. But when you get a 6X, that X is, to, is a pull frequency or a counterwave frequency which will pull the substance out of your body. In the case of uh, uh, chlorine it, it is called chlorum, okay, and it will be, it should be in an X phase potency, all right, in order to pull it out of the body. Now, I'm not going to get deep into homeopathy here, but this is one prominent form of vibrational healing. Now, when these two wave signatures come together and they meet, what happens is one offsets the other and there's a reaction that takes place until the entire thing hits a flat line on the baseline signature and so it flattens both of the waves, boom, whoosh, just like so. Once it flattens it, then you breathe and it will literally move it out of your body field complex. It's a 180 degree counterphase remedy and it will literally move it right out of your body mind field complex. There's a lady here that's been struggling with lupus and so I can tell the lady with lupus that the number one cause of lupus is an allergy to chlorine. And you need to separate yourself from chlorine every way that you can. Because what it does is it gets into the skin, the largest organ in the body, and it sets up a, basically a skin infection. And your skin can't breathe anymore and so forth. And it, and it winds up creating what you call uh, autoimmune system dysfunction disease. Now, I've worked on people with lupus before, and I've even brought them up into the front of the room and given them the counterwave frequency for chlorine. And as they sit there and breathe, people in the group can actually smell the body out chlorine right through their skin, right through their breath, right there into the room. 
That's how quick it can happen, okay? But you've got to know what this frequency is right here. You've got to be able to apply the exact perfect frequency. This is not some willy-nilly, I'm going to lay my hands on you and feed energy with intention, and it's going to heal that. It's, it's I'm going to know what I'm going to be giving you. It's the awareness that does it. It is the awareness and being able to focus that awareness on exactly what it is that you're doing. And the body will tell you every time what needs to be done. That's the key. And every single body is different. So you can't apply the same techniques to every body, can you? You say. So this is the simplest explanation that I can, I can give you for what happens with vibrational healing. Now, in energetic healing, you try to create this with intention. But how much more effective is it going to be if you know what it is that you're creating? Do you understand what I'm saying? This is where all that awareness comes in, isn't it? You see. Now, I can take somebody's body, like this young lady back here, if you don't mind me dousing into your field. Do you mind that? Okay, and I can check to see how much chlorine is in that body-mind field complex right now. And I'm going to start off with a quadrillion radionic units. That's a one with 15 zeros behind it. Okay, and she's clear to give and receive 100% true and accurate information, and she is not. So I'm going to have to clear her. Would you uncross your legs and arms for me if you don't mind? Move over there. Intensify and magnify the integrated codes and frequencies of perfect order of priority for your eyes. Good, just done. Anchor lock seal. Thank you, Creator of all that is. Would you mind coming up? Do you mind doing that? Uh, <laughs> What's your name? I'm sorry. Kaya. Kaya? Mm -hmm. Would you have a seat, Kaya? Now we're going to check her arm here and see. She, this body's clear to give and receive 100% true and accurate information now and hold. Yes. See, a minute ago, she wasn't clear to give and receive 100% true and accurate information. If I'm going to help her and I'm going to feed her a counterwave frequency, it won't do a bit of good if, she's, if her body is reading it bass backwards. Do you understand what I'm saying? I won't pull chlorine out of her body. I'll give her chlorine. Do you understand the difference? This is all very specific stuff. But once you understand it, it's extremely easy to apply. I teach this kind of work in the third level apprenticeship program, which these people back here are getting ready to get in a form I call frequency healing, form number one. And basically, I do it by virtue of a, of, of a technique known as mental radionics. So I teach mental radionics in Phoenix Vibrational Healing. So I'm going to check to see how many radionic units of chlorine are in this body field complex. It's not just in her body. Understand this is physical and this is physical and this is physical. It's all physical, remember? Okay, so if we look at her right now and we check this out, it's more than a million radionic units, more than a billion, a trillion, a quadrillion, more than 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 quadrillion, more than 100 quadrillion, more than a million quadrillion, more than a quadrillion, quadrillion radionic units. That's a quadrillion to the second power. More than uh, two to the power of three, a quadrillion to the third power. A quadrillion to the fourth power, fifth power, sixth power, seventh power. A quadrillion radionic units of chlorine in this body and field to the sixth power. And hold, please. To the seventh power. And hold. No, the arm drops at the seventh power. So somewhere between sixth and seventh power. This is an astronomical amount of chlorine in this body. And it just won't let go of it. It just won't let go of it. Now, you, you don't have lupus, so your body doesn't more than likely hold on to it. You know, you eat this toxin today, you crap it out tomorrow. You know what I mean? We all do that. But some people just can't get rid of it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And this is one of the reasons why people develop disease states. And then what do you have to do in order to help somebody like that? You have to have specific knowledge. You can't just go in here willy-nilly and saying, I'm going to pray for a healing of, of, of you know, of, of lupus. You have to know something about what you're doing. That's when you start getting massive results. When you know what you're doing. When you have the awareness to set your mind upon. Okay? And so, I'm going to give her, do you, would you like to do this? 
a counterweight frequency for chlorine here for a moment. And we're, and we're going to get rid of some of this. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to set an intention that she clear what's appropriate for her to clear now at this time. Because a person can only stand so much detox at one time. You know, I mean, I've been accused of putting people in the bathroom on commodes for weeks at a time. <laughs> You know, that's really hard to take because I'm a nice guy. You know? <laughs> now, now, understand, this is likely to happen to her. She's going to have a literal physical detox. She's going to start breathing chlorine out into the room. She's going to start, you know, perspiring chlorine. She's going to start, start outgassing chlorine. You know, she's going to, you know, understand? She's going to do this because there's no way she cannot. But I'm going to do this with knowledge and awareness. And so it's going to be effective. And in some level, in some way, this is going to help our situation. Okay? And so I'm going to cook up a counterwave frequency to chlorine right now. And we're going to integrate it here using, using mental alchemy, basically. This is what we're working with here. See? Give me just a second here. So to intensify and magnify, to integrate these codes, frequencies, and counterwave frequencies and signatures into this body, mindset, morphogenetic field, and subtle physical body at the deepest, most appropriate level in their perfect amount, frequency, duration, potency, and wave signature for our highest good at this time. Anchor, lock, seal. Thank you, creator of all that is. Now I want you to start breathing in through your nose very deeply and blow it out. Whoa. Now some of you back here may be feeling something going on up here as she breathes. I don't know if you can feel that or not, but basically what you're feeling is a literal transmutation going on in her energy field and you're sitting within it. So you're feeling this energetic pulsation, waves coming out or whatever. There's many different interpretations for it. You can feel it as heat, you can feel it as a chill, you can feel it as a pulse wave, you can feel it in a million different ways, you know, but whatever way you may be feeling it, it's real. If you can't feel it, don't worry about it. How many of you are feeling as she started breathing there? Okay. That's probably easily half the room. Okay. Just keep breathing. I want you to will, choose, love to let go of it. Transmute. Oh, my. Did you feel that burst right there? As soon as I said that and she took that next breath, you feel that burst come out of her right there. She's transmuting massive amounts of chlorine out of her body right now. Does anybody smell anything that smells like chlorine? You taste it. Okay, thank you. Okay. You're smelling it? All right. Okay. I mean, this is like, you know, let's just call it magic, right? But it's based in science. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it takes knowledge to do this. You've got to know what you're doing. But when you can, this woman is just going to, I mean, she's just going to start expelling chlorine out of wazoo for the next month. For the next month. Yeah. <sighs> You're doing really good. Again, I want you to will, choose, love, set your intention upon it to let go of this and transmute it from all levels of the body, mind, field complex. Whew, you can feel another burst right there as soon as you say it. See? So it's a good idea to remind yourself to let go. To let go. You will it. You choose it. You love it. To let go of it. See? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> quadrillion to the sixth power, right? Quadrillion radionic units to the sixth power. I show you in my very first workshop how to start quantifying this stuff. How to identify what the toxin is, what's the poison, how much of it's in the body, how can you calibrate it, what do you need to do about it, how do you get rid of it. It's scientific. This is not some airy fairy thing, understand. When and dissect it and identify it and the body will tell you what's in it if you know how to ask it you see Whew. Whew. this is a major clearing here so let's are you having a reaction you are aren't you yes. you're having that yeah you're having a reaction too yeah all of you breathe just a little bit in through your nose and out through your mouth I'm blowing these frequencies throughout the room any of you can be clearing right now yeah 
You feel something going on? A little bit. Yeah. It's very subtle for you, more than likely. And understand the reason why. We're out here in our field. We're, it's happening right out here. It's, she is the center of the activity. So very often, the person getting worked on is the person that feels the least. But if you're sitting here and you feel, bam, these waves hitting you, you see, then it's very apparent to you that some major clearing is going on. You know. Yeah. I'm sorry. Your name again. Kyle. Kyle. Mm -hmm. Kyle. Yeah, we're going to check our body now. I mean, this is what, two minutes? We're going to check. Wait, is there, a, there is a, a quadrillion radionic units of chlorine in this body and energy field or subtle physical bodies now at this time. And hold. That's a no. We're less than a quadrillion. We're, we have more than a trillion and hold. More than 10 trillion and hold. More than 50 trillion and hold. More than 80 trillion and hold, and that drops at 80 trillion. So somewhere between 50 and 80 trillion units, we got rid of just a massive amount of chlorine from the body in a matter of two to three minutes. Now, what we did was we flatlined that wave signature, you see? And what she's going to do now is she's going to start peeing out chlorine. She's going to start sweating out and bowel moving out chlorine, you see? She will literally start smelling it in her urine or in her feces or in her any way the body can get rid of it, it's going to get rid of it. And one of the ways it's going to get rid of it is through the skin because this is the main place where the chlorine is lodged in the body, see? So it's not just in the physical body, it's in these physical bodies as well. Thank you so much for being our witness. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> this is how vibrational healing works. It's an exact science. This is not, this is not something that you're just going to do with your, your will and in your intention. Understand. You've got to understand something about it in order to do it. Now, I want to go into this here very quickly. Spirit works. I'm going to do some clearings here. Spirit works in four primary ways that I've discovered. It works in four different ways, and it works through four different mediums. The first one is it works through name. It works through something called rank. R-E-N-K. It works through number. It works through light-encoded geometry. All of this, every single bit of it, is also a form of prayer. There is only one healer. That's the one infinite creator of all that is. Do you understand? And all healing emanates from that one infinite source, you see. And so you can spell out a prayer and name what it is that you want to have happen. And it can be very effective. Hey, girl. Hi. Hi. And so spirit works through name, okay? What did I do with her? I named the substance that we're taking out of the field. I named it. I gave it a name. It's chlorine. That word chlorine has a vibrational frequency and signature. That vibration is the equivalent of the name of the substance. Now that's not always the case, but most of the time it is. Because English is a sacred language. And so things have named their baseline vibratory frequency. One thing that is not is cancer. You can't call cancer out and say, Dear Creator, I want you to deliver me from all cancer. Deliver this body from cancer. It's not effective if you call it cancer because the word cancer does not is not the equivalent of the vibrational frequency of the disease state. But many things are. Now, I'm not going to go into that any deeper right now at this time. There are ways that you can go about determining whether or not the body has a cancer in it. But understand that if you find a cancer in the body, that does not mean that it's a malignant tumor. It is a frequency, but not necessarily what we call cancer. All right? But in most instances, the name of something describes its baseline vibratory frequency. Now, rank is a little something different. The hermetic principles say that the higher planes rule the lower. So in other words, in order to do work in the fourth dimension with emotions, 
You need to be operating from up here in the fifth dimension or higher. I'm, that's all I'm going to say about that right now. I can't go into it any deeper. Number is another thing. In other words, chlorine can be described as a number. And in the field of radionics, which is a field of psychotronics, there is a rate for chlorine that will pull chlorine out of the body. And that, that like for instance, the number of the Christ frequency on a radionic scale is 33-33, the age at which he was crucified. And so if you use that number, it equals the Christ frequency in radionics. So everything also has a And one of the most powerful forms of things that, 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 that spirit understands is light-encoded geometry. And light-encoded geometry is what runs the world. That's what you you are your light encoded geometry. Your entire body is based on sacred geometry. Every distance of every bone, if you measure between your two fingertips right here, it's the same as the height of your body. Your entire body is made in a geometric pattern. So are, is every other form of life on this planet. It even goes down into atomic and subatomic structure where uh, electrons are flying around nuclei. That's a geometric pattern, you see. And so God geometrizes, you see. And that is the pattern that is used. So everything has a pattern of light encoded geometry. So understand that you can use light encoded geometry to both give somebody something or straighten out an aberrant piece of geometry in the field or counterwave something and pull it from the field. You see, and very little is known about this. This is the height of Phoenix Vibrational Healing. And so therefore what I do is I attune my students to light encoded geometry, sacred healing codes and symbols that I discovered and were given to me and that I have cooked up and attuned them to and all they have to do is simply feed them out of their morphogenetic field where they reside. And they're right here in this field and they're back there in those fields. Light encoded geometry, that's how it works, okay? That's how it works. And all of it ultimately is interchangeable. And all of it is a form of concentrated prayer to the Creator. Because even number can be prayer, you see. The spoken word can be prayer, you see. What's happening when we speak that word? There's vibrations and frequencies that are going out into this room. There's waves that are being created, is there not? Yeah. Absolutely. Every thought is a prayer. Yes. Yes. What about questions right now? <laughs> I see some people processing. You, you process through this. You, it's information you're unfamiliar with. So what do you do with it? You process it. And not only are you processing it because it's information, you're processing it because it's challenging that. I embrace this truth. This is what I can accept. But I ain't never heard this before. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you're processing it into that thing you call reality. You see what I mean? And so you're having a healing, a clearing. Let's breathe a little bit. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Yeah. Whew. This room's starting to cook now. Gosh, it got to cooking yesterday so good, didn't it? <laughs> we all left covered in sweat. It was great. It's great fun, isn't it? <laughs> How are you doing today, sweetie? <laughs> you still having a shift from yesterday? All right, this is good. See, that's right. She doesn't even look like the same person. She didn't look like the same person when she left here last no, night. She didn't. No, she she's totally transformed. Same. Totally transformed in two, in two hours yesterday. Yeah. She's just not the same person that walked in here yesterday. She's radiant right now, <laughs> utterly. You agree? You saw her yesterday. You see her now. She's not the same person. It's that quick. It can happen that quick. Whew. Does it seem hot in here to you? You know, they came in yesterday and were complaining about it being so cold. Can we shut down some of that air conditioning? 
Don't you wish you had some now? I do have a question about the, the chlorine. Um, <coughs> the Kayo. Kayo? Kaya? Um, Kaya, right. Beautiful, by the way. Um, you pulled the chlorine out today. I gave her what I called the counter the wave frequency. counter wave frequency. Right. And I think you did for almost all of us. I think you're going to find some benefit there. Yes, but you are. My, my question then is... Tomorrow when she takes her shower, she puts the chlorine back in, and then when she drinks the tap water, she's putting the chlorine back in. So I'm not saying that you, it doesn't benefit, but can she you're continuing... It? Absolutely. You're continuing to pollute your own body with the same stuff that's damaging it. That's exactly right. But not at the same level. Not at the same level. level. That's right. So See, the problem is, is that the chlorine was lodged in her body-mind field complex. Do you okay. understand what I'm yes. saying? So what, what we're doing is we're dumping a massive accumulation of it that's been going on for years. Now, she'll take a, a shower tomorrow and she'll get a certain amount of that. There's a shower head you can get that transmutes chlorine. It's called a, a copper zinc C-U-Z-N turbo shower. You can get a filter for your shower. You need a good water filter that takes out chlorine and a distiller won't even take out chlorine. I have a, I have a water machine that takes out the vast majority of chlorine. If you're interested, it's called a Roxtract. R-O-X-T-R-A-C-T. It's on my website, but you call me if you want to order a unit, all right? But it takes out a massive amount of chlorine out of the water. You never want to go in another swimming pool and you don't ever want to go in a hot tub. I'm sorry, but you got, now there's other things, understand, and I, and I can go into this and she can also go back here and work with one of the apprentices back here in the back of the room. The reason that she keeps collecting it is she's got resonance for it. She's got in her field something known as an attractor field, an attractor field for chlorine. She needs to be ridded of that. She needs another clearing because that'll take her out of resonance with it so that her body will stop accumulating it. Do you understand? The list goes on and on and on. There are many things that can be done for you. Please know that. And she's not the only one. There's many things that can be done for you. Do you understand? Everyone in this room. See? But also what's important that I'm getting is that you really want to be very, very careful that you're only detoxing to the extent that the person can handle Absolutely. it. Absolutely, yeah. You do not want to make any kind of assumptions that you know what that is. That's exactly right. The other thing is, is that there are protocols that you can use if you get overburdened with a detox reaction. And I have information on that and hand it out next Tuesday night when people come in for what I call the first group appointment. Because we're going to go through some healings on next Tuesday night. It's a three solid hour clearing process, one after another, after another, after another. So I give you the information that you may need to get and find a, a toxin adsorbent that will absorb, adsorb, A-D-S-O-R-B, those toxins as they're being released from your body. Activated charcoal is one of the substances that can do that. There's a product at the health food store called Sony's Number no. 7 that can do that, that can absorb those toxins as the cellular level of the body's letting go of it. Is that on your website? No, it is not. No, it is not. These are just, there's a book called RX Charcoal, and it tells you about what ch activated charcoal can do. It's, it's literally gotten a tractor by it. One little particle of it can absorb millions of times its weight in toxins and poisons. So if you keep a little bit of this in your digestive system, and you also have to supplement with selenium, because that's the only main nutrient or trace mineral that it will pull out of your body. The reason for that is because selenium binds with heavy metals. Okay, and so then it sees the selenium as a toxin and it pulls selenium out of your body. So if you're going to take activated charcoal, you take selenium along with it and some vitamin C for bowel tolerance because it will thicken your bowel and you don't want to get constipated with a bunch of toxins trying to get out of your body. At any rate, that's one protocol. The second protocol is Sony's number seven. These are all standard detox protocols that, you know, um, you know, they're freely of a, actually the one with that charcoal, selenium, and vitamin C I developed for my clients many years. But the other one, Sony's number seven, has been on the market for, I don't know, 40 years or something, you know. It's li liquid bentonite, bentonite clay. Let's do a clearing. Let's go, let's go in and do this clearing on the future. You want to do that? Yes. <clears throat> the first thing I want to do is I want to find out. <clears throat> 
I don't know how many of us are here in the room, but let's just, and I got my apprentices back there, which have already been cleared more than likely on this. By the way, these apprentices that are here can do this clearing for you. They can do this clearing for anybody else, okay? These are highly experienced healers back here. They've got a tremendous amount of knowledge. These things you see me do up here, they've already been taught. They know how to do them, okay? Not everything I do, don't get me wrong, I'm still busy teaching, you know, but, but the fact of the matter is they're very powerful and effective healers. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear the blocks, the barriers, and the issues, and the subconscious programming to moving into the future with safety, confidence, protection, and power. And who did I work on with that? I was, yes, it was Deb, right? And then we're going to get you back up here and see if you can walk across this room and keep an arm up, okay? That's what we're going to do. And we will have proven that you can now move into the future, won't we? Won't we? I say, won't we? Okay, yes. <laughs> now, what I want you to do, we're gonna, uh, we got to go through a couple of procedures here. The first one is un uncross your legs and your arms. If you have a, any form of a pendant on, please take it off. Any form of a pendant on, anything hanging over your chest. I'm getting ready to, uh, to broadcast codes and frequencies, and those pendants do not need to be integrated into your morphogenetic field. So if you had, that's not beneficial, understand. <laughs> Okay, so anything you got around your neck, take it off if you would, please, and just put it, stow it away. Now, um, no, no crossed legs and no crossed arms, although you're going to see me doing that, and that's for a specific reason, and I, I'm not going to go into that right now. The first thing we got to do is we got everybody, got to get everybody in the room clear to give and receive 100% true and accurate information, because when we do the clearing, we want it done, we want it done, we want it cleared. We don't want to undo something, we want to do something, you see what I'm saying? So everybody's got to be in a condition to do that, and I'm going to do that by broadcasting the code program right now that'll, that'll clear you to give and receive 100% true and accurate information, okay? Are you leaving us, or are you just getting up there in the line of fire, girl? The line of fire. <laughs> that is one brave girl back there, buddy. <laughs> She's kind of like me, a glutton for a good healing. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give us a code program right now, and we're going to just hold a field of intention here in the room. <laughs> That's fine, man. Integrate these codes and frequencies in perfect order of priority for each person here's highest good at this time. Anchor lock, seal, thank you, creator of all that is. And give me a couple of breaths. In through the nose and out through the mouth. Deep. Deep. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through a little process here. We're going to connect up with our high selves, okay? We're going to make a deliberate connection to our high self. So just go down inside for a moment if you would. Just close your eyes and follow along with my voice, okay? I want you to reach up out of the top of your head with a gold bond of energy directly above you to your high self. I want you to connect into your high self however you imagine that to be directly above you, above your central channel, now at this time. Just make a firm connection to your high self or an intention to firmly connect with your high self. Now bring that back down to a point in the center of your head, the same gold bond of energy. Bring it right back down to the center of your head. And bring it on down to your heart, a gold bond of energy. And bring it on down your torso, out your feet and connect it into the center of the planet. Ask your high self to assist you with this full clearing process now. Ask your high self to log in and register the following goal for a full clearing process now. The goal is I walk into the future with safety, confidence, protection, and power. Ask your high self to log in and register this positive goal now at this time and to assist you in clearing all blocks, barriers, issues, all discordant subconscious programs and programming, all negative emotional charge.
to realizing this in your life. The full and complete, total, personal ability to walk into the future with safety, confidence, protection, and power. I ask that this be done now, so be it. We are thanking thee, and so it is done now. Ask your high self now at this time to research, fully identify, find, and locate, count, and number. All blocks, barriers, issues, all ages of cause of negative emotional charge, all primary ages of cause of negative emotional charge, all discordant subconscious programs and programming that is blocking, impeding, diminishing, or eroding your full, complete, and total personal free ability to walk into the future with safety, confidence, protection, and power. Ask your high self to log all of this in, all ages of cause. Ask your high self to take you back to all appropriate primary ages of cause where you store negative emotional charge that's blocking your ability to do this. Ask your high self to hold you right there and bring you online to all negative emotional charge you're experiencing in regards to walking into the future with safety, confidence, protection, and power. Ask your high self to hold you right there and bring you online to this negative emotional charge now and all blocks, barriers, and issues. Ask that this be done now, so be it. We are thanking thee, and so it is done now. I'm gonna give you a little code program now. Anchor, lock, seal, thank you, creator of all that is. Ask your high self now at this time to fully and completely integrate the positive goal. I walk into the future with safety, confidence, protection, and power. Ask that this be done now, so be it. We are thanking thee, and so it is done now. <sighs> <sighs> Anchor, lock, seal, thank you, creator of all that is. Ask your high self to assist you in lifting, clearing, dissolving, discreating, transmuting, incinerating, and purging all of this now from all levels of all that you are. Ask that this be done now, so be it. We are thanking thee, and so it is done now. Now let's breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Let's move some air. Five, three, one, two, three, intensify, magnify, intensify, six, four, three, nine, three, eight, six, four, seven, three, intensify, just will, choose, love, to let go of it. Five, three, one, two, three, intensify, magnify, intensify, six, five, four, three, nine, three, six, four, seven, three, intensify, magnify, Jeez, five, one, two, three, intensify, magnify, four, seven, three, intensify, magnify, two, three, six, five. Just let go of it. Just will, choose, love, to let go of it now. Five, three, one, two, three, intensify, magnify, six, five, four, three, three, eight, six. Four, seven, three, intensify, nine, five, five, three, one, two, three, intensify, nine, five. Five, three, one, two, three, intensify, nine, five, four, seven, three, intensify, nine, five, two, three, five, six, five. Four, five, three, eight, six. You've got about 7% more to go. I want you to fully will, choose, love, to let go of the rest of it now and transmute it throughout all levels of all that you are. Inhale and blow it out in the nose, out the mouth. Just let go of it. Five, three, one, two, three, intensify, magnify, six, five. Four, three, three, eight, six, four, seven, three, intensify, magnify. Two percent, two percent left. We'll choose love to let go of and transmute the remainder of it now. Transmute it. Five, three, one, two, three, intensify, magnify. That's wonderful. Thank you. And you can come back. <laughs> That's excellent. Okay, so now you've opened your eyes and I want to ask you something. Is your vision a little clearer, a little sharper? 
understand that every single bit of this is causing a shadow out here in our subtle bodies that we're having to penetrate and look through in order to see. You see. Your baseline vibratory frequency is vibrating higher and higher. How many of you are vibrating? You can feel some kind of tingling or something going on in your body. Some of you can, right? Correct? Okay. Understand that what you're feeling there is life force racing through your meridians that was not able to get through there just 10 minutes ago. I just want you to know what it is that you're feeling. See? Every time we remove a series of blockages like this, life force starts moving through our system faster and faster and faster until it's just racing. You unstop the water hose, the, wa the life force starts just massively flowing through the body-mind field complex. Some of that was an emotional clearing. How many of you are feeling kind of emotional right now just for no, no apparent reason whatsoever? Or you may have even keyed in on an emotional event in your life that caused you trauma, correct? Are you having that happen? All right. Okay, so part of it was emotional. Now, Deb, come up here for me if you would. Let's check our victim. Yeah, that's right. And move it. All right, come on over here. You doing okay? You're having a clearing, are you? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm so grateful for your healing. You okay here? We're going to get you grounded out here in just a minute. Some of you are flying so high you're not in your bodies. Okay, so we need to do that. You all right? You're having a major emotional clearing here as well, are you not? Isn't that wonderful? I'm so grateful for your healing. You're welcome, honey. You're welcome. Thank you. I want you to raise this arm right now, if you would, and hold it here for me. Hold it up for me. Hold, and I'm going to push down. Hold. I want you to walk to that wall. Look, yes, ma'am, you are flat walking into the future. Yes, ma'am, you are. You're doing great. You're doing great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? This is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for being our witness, Dad. Thank you. Ain't it wonderful? I just love a good healing, don't you? Yes, ma'am. Yesterday you explained about the life force being able to be absorbed, and that's how we stay healthy and everything. And I'd like for you to hear how you explain that, that you're removing the obstructions to us. Every, life force. every single discordant emotion that we've got going on in our body, mind, field complex, these discordant thoughts and thought forms, etc., they have matter. They're matter. Do you understand? So eventually what happens is you have an emotional situation, for instance, that comes up in your life, all right? You get emotional. It's just not what's going on right now in present time because you're storing emotions from your whole past and even past lifetimes. So basically what's happening is every time you have a similar emotion that comes up, like grief, let's just say grief, it piles on top of another pile of grief that was already there in your body, mind, field complex. So this thing becomes a monster. You know what I'm saying? And so it, it, what, at the conscious level, the first thing you know is you feel the grief, right? So you feel it, but then you, you can only do so much about it if you don't have the tools to let go of it. Do you understand and transmute it? Okay, so what do you do? It, it solidifies in your field. It goes down from the conscious level into the subconscious. Eventually, it goes into the body. And it lodges itself somewhere in the actual body or the subtle bodies. It's always in the subtle bodies. But eventually it lodges right there in deep into the tissue of the body. Now what it does when it does that is it starts to create stress on the cellular level of the body. And the, and the cell starts to close up and harden its shell, its outer membrane. All right, and then toxins can't get out of the cell and nutrients can't get into the cell where the mitochondria is. That's where the DNA is. That's what makes the cell replicate. This is one of the primary reasons why the body wears out. Do you understand what I mean? This is also the primary reason why as we get older, we start moving very slow in small steps and we can't motivate our body. We literally get seized up with our own emotions. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so this is matter, understand. And then you get into situations like arthritis, where you literally start creating physical matter in your joints, you see, that start to restrict their motion and movement, you see. 
There's just no need in this. There's no need in people deteriorating and eroding and getting sick and, and, and getting diseases all the time. And I'm not sitting here saying that, you know, I've got the answer to every single one of those and all of those can be healed. And they, but understand, the idea is to get it before it gets you. Do you understand what I'm saying? And if you're in the field of vibrational healing, you can go in here and pick all this stuff apart and clear it. And then you just never have the problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a matter of going in there, dissecting it, finding it, getting it cleared, and then you never have the problem. It's harder once you already have the problem to back it out of the body. It can be done. And the way you do it is you attack it from as many angles as you can. So if you've got arthritis, you're going to find something that's going to clear the calcium out of the joints. You're going to give something there that's going to support the joint health. The, the, you know, reconstruct the, the joint itself, the, the synovial fluid, feed the synovial fluid. The list goes on and on and on. Then you're going to do the emotional clearing to get the discordant emotions out of the joints of the body. Then you're going to go in and clear the discordant and negative thought forms that are being held in there. The list goes on and on and on understand but you've got to know how to do it this is not something you go about doing willy-nilly you've got to know what you're doing and when you know what you're doing you can do these things and that's what this is all about that's what this is all about so the faster you need healing, the more levels you have to strike it from. You need to do the clearings at physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual levels. If you've already got the problem, then you need to go after it just as, as hard as you can. Do you understand? And the more multidimensional levels that you approach it from, the faster you're going to get results. That's it. Yes, ma'am. So, so the arthritis would also, is part of emotional too? Absolutely, everything is. Every single disease in the body, every single pain that you have in your entire body is partly trapped emotions, solidified matter that you call emotions. And that's the subject of this weekend's workshop. And that's the reason why it's my very first workshop. Because you can't pay a healer enough money to sit down with you for the rest of your life and clear every discordant piece of emotional garbage that you're hauling around. So you better learn how to do it for yourself. You know what I'm saying? So I put the tools you need the most in your hands from the very first minute. Now when you come into the second level workshop, that's when you start getting attuned to some of these sacred healing codes and symbols. And you just walk up to somebody, you just, oh my gosh. Come up here for a second if you might, don't mind. Do you mind volunteering for me? I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. No, Amy. Amy. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Great. You have a seat, yes. That was my last relationship's name. <laughs> <coughs> I'll be able to remember this one. Yeah. Yes, this is Amy. Yep. <laughs> you don't resemble her in the slightest. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> okay, so let's look here. What, uh, let's, let's check out a couple of chakras here. Hold, hold for me if you would. Hold. We're going to just access this chakra. Hold. We're going to access the third eye. Hold. We're going to access the throat. Hold. We're going to access the heart. Hold. Boom. We're going to access the solar plexus here. Hold. We're going to access the navel here. Hold. Boom. That's weak. We're going to go up this side and we're going to look at the, at the root chakra. Hold. That's down. She can't get grounded. You need root chakras blocked off, you can't connect to the earth. You can't get grounding. You got to be in your body. You got to be able to ground to the planet. Do you understand what I'm saying? We can check the back side of the chakras as well. There's a fourth eye back here. Hold. Well, there's an ultra major chakra right here at the base of the brain. This is the most important chakra in the body. People don't even know it exists. And I'm going to check this chakra right here now and hold, and that's down. All right. So anywhere I access on the body, if the chakra is down, it causes the body stress, the arm falls. I've already identified what's going on. Now all I need to do is give her a couple of codes. It'll blow up and down her central channel right here and open the entire thing. She's going to have every chakra in her body permanently opened in a matter of one minute. <laughs> It's fine, magnified, integrate these codes and frequencies in perfect order of priorities. Only for Amy's high school at this time. Anchor lock seal. Thank you, creator of all it is. Whoa. Feel this field of process. You can feel that. This is how long it takes to permanently open every chakra on the front and back side of the body. Permanently. 
I'm not talking this is temporary stuff. And tomorrow you're going to come back in and that chakra is going to be shut back down again. This is permanent. Okay, barring some massive trauma to the body, a major automobile accident, a near-death experience, or something like that, the vast majority of this work is permanent. Once it's done, it's done. It's no need to do it again. And this is part of what I'm going to do next week on Tuesday night. This is only one of the procedures out of 80 or 100 that we're going to do that night. Because I got to get vital life force running through your body. I did thousands of appointments. And you know what I wound up doing? The same appointment every single time a person walked through the door. Right. So after thousands of appointments, what I found out, everybody needs the same thing initially when they get this work. They need to get their entire body mind field up, complex opened up to vital life force energy and get it racing through there. Just that alone will start bringing back a lot of, of, of a person's energy and health. See? So that's the purpose of the first group appointment on Tuesday night. You can sign up right back there and put down a deposit and be here with me. It will not be me talking. It will be me conducting one clearing process after another clearing process after another clearing process. And then we'll have to get back in our bodies because I can't have you flying your way out of here. Yeah. Now, is it okay if other people come that haven't been to these free sessions? You can if you want, but understand, you've been here with me. You going to trust me to pay you to do, my, do this healing that night? Understand? Bring them into one of these sessions here in the middle of the week on Tuesday or Thursday night. We're going to have another session. They'll be able to get a taste for this. They'll be able to understand more about what's going on. It'll be a talk every night, and then, I'll, and then we'll do some healing. Let's go check these chakras now. This girl's doing great. You feel this? You do? <laughs> I just love Amy. Look at her. She's getting a big old grin on her face. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Open them. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to check this. We got a hold up for me here on this arm. Hold, hold. And we're going to go here to the third eye. Hold. We went down at the heart chakra, didn't we? Hold. Look how strong this is now. We're going to go to the solar plexus and hold. We're going to go to the navel here and hold. We're going to go to the root chakra back here and hold. We're going to go to the alta major chakra right here and hold. Look how strong this is. Thank you, honey, for being our witness. Thank you. You feel energy running through you? Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Yeah. This is how simple it is. A second level workshop will give you this ability. I'm going to teach you this in public. You don't have to attend an apprenticeship program to get this. I can't begin to tell you the thousands of things that you will be able to do if you just take three public workshops with, with me in Phoenix Vibrational Healing. Literally, by the time you get through the third workshop, you will almost be able to clear almost anything from the subtle body-mind field complex that you can name that you can name. This is Phoenix Vibrational Healing. This is what I love. And this is what I'm extremely passionate about. And I don't think there's anything I want to do more in my life than to watch a massive healing happen for somebody and watch crap and disease go out of their life. This is the most fulfilling thing I could figure out to do with my life. And it is very fulfilling. <laughs> you know. I gave up private appointment work 13 years ago to do nothing but teach this. I made a lot of money. I gave that up to be here and show you how to do it. I never had to teach this. But you know what? My conscience wouldn't let me do that. Because I can't be a subtle energy researcher of my caliper and not be sharing this information with other healers and people that haven't even done healing before in their entire life. There's, pe there's apprentices back there that never heard a thing about healing. This man right here, level five apprentice of mine, is one of the finest healers that I have. Out of all of my apprentices, he never knew what healing was. He couldn't even spell the word. Now, <laughs> 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 I didn't even know what a healer was. Now I are one, you know. <laughs> Ain't that right, Paul? That's true. That's true. So don't think that you've got to know something to come into this. As a matter of fact, you're almost better off if you don't. You know, you're almost better off if you don't. But, I, but you know, I'm here for you. And this is, this is my joy in life. So please come be with me. We'll have some fun. So. 
What about questions right now? Yes, Dan. Um, so do you suggest, um, you, have, you have three workshops and a weekend. So do you suggest <coughs> coming to all three? Here's the, okay, let's, let's go over that. Each event that I do is like a mini workshop with a major healing, okay? So on Tuesday night, it's prosperity and abundance. What does that consist of? It consists of clearing almost every single negative program that is lodged in your subconscious mind. The ones that say in your subconsciousness, I'm not good enough. I can't do that. I'm not successful enough. I can't manifest money. I don't know. I can't get wealth in my life. That we call it prosperity and abundance, but understand it infects every area of your life. Do you understand what I'm talking about? In one night, I'm going to show you and explain to you and show you on, on a body with, with kinesiology what we're going to eliminate. And we're going to cook up a program and we're going to integrate it into the subconscious mind. And when it goes in there, it's going to displace the negative programming in the subconscious mind. And we're going to wipe anywhere from about 95, 96 to 100% of it out in one evening. That's a $65 fee Tuesday night. On Thursday night, we're going to do what I call fulfilling relationships. And it doesn't just have to do with your relationship with others. It has to do with your relationship with you and your relationship with the Creator and every relationship in your life. And I've got about 20 or 30 things I can do there that night. So what I'm going to do is when you come through the door, I'm going to check out which one you need the most. And, we're going to, and then I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to go, just like this thing here. Walk into the future with safety, confidence, protection, and power. I'll show you how it works. I'll show you what we're doing. Then we're going to do a clearing on it. Say for me, I walk into the future with safety, confidence, protection, and power. I walk into the future with safety, confidence, protection, and Let power. Let me see your arm and hold. Yeah. Say, two hours ago. Two hours ago. I walk into the future. I walk into the future. With safety, confidence, protection, and power. With safety, confidence, protection, and power. And hold. That's a no. And more than likely, it was a no for you, too. Because we've all got subconscious programs back here in our, in our mind that say, you know, it's difficult to walk. You've got to maintain your balance. And I've been damaged doing this before, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, this is another reason why a personal, an elderly person will step off of a curb. All right? They'll step off of a curb onto a street. They will fall. They'll, they'll fall down. They'll break a bone. They'll get up. They'll have the bone set. They'll get a healing. But every single time from that moment on when they step off of the curb with that foot leading forward, their entire energy field will collapse, therefore making them more susceptible to breaking another bone. Your own body remembers the trauma. And so when you get into the mode of moving in that way, the entire energy field collapses. You see what I'm saying? Yes, and I have a mother that demonstrates Yes. That's how it works. So your body remembers a kinesthetic, it has a kinesthetic memory that remembers that and collapses the energy field. Did you know that 10 minutes before you have an accident, your body already knows you're going to have it? Did you know that? Yes, it does. And so therefore your energy field collapses around you, you weaken Therefore, the accident happens. You lose mental clarity the whole nine yards. This is especially the case with an emotional trauma. You already know that you're going to, your body already has an innate intelligence that knows that you're going to have an emotional encounter. And so when you go in and you clear an emotional trauma, you have to clear it 10 minutes before it began, before it even happened. I can go on and on and on for weeks, as you can well imagine. But these are all things that I teach, and I'll show you how to do them all. I have two levels of work. I'm here in Columbus right now to present half of that, the public levels of my work. Provided that you want to take this training, you want to learn how to become a powerful healer and you apply it, you will receive an invitation to the apprenticeship program. It's held down in the Great Smoky Mountains down in North Carolina. It's a five-day training program. You come in for a week in paradise. It's beautiful, you know, Where's and that's where I host it. $850 for level one. It's a five-day training program. You will get a manual. 
The first level manual is 100 pages. The second level manual is 200 pages. The third level manual is 300 pages. The fourth level manual is almost 400 pages. The fifth level manual is 550 pages. It took me two years to write it. They're about they're about nine hundred dollars, and then you've got your food. Your but these workshops, these public level workshops, one, two, and three are four hundred dollars right here in Columbus right now. Now if I'm in California, I have to charge more now. I've got bigger expenses and so forth. But I'm here in Columbus. I'm four hours from my home. That's my price. It hasn't gone up in seven or eight years. Yeah. So I ask you to come out and be with me. Yes, ma'am. So what's the difference, I guess? The weekend is the, the weekend is the training workshop. It's the first level training workshop in Phoenix Vibrational Healing where I give you all the knowledge about the kinesiology, how to check in on the body. There's about 20 different healing techniques that I teach you in that workshop, plus all of the dousing on the body like you see me doing up here and, the, and many different ways to go about doing that and the emotional clearing work. That's the workshop on the weekend. This is if you want to learn it. If you want to learn how to, how to help yourself heal. Now, on Tuesday night and Thursday night, it's a facilitated clearing along with education. Okay? On the following Tuesday night, the night of the group appointment on the 31st, that is a massive night of nothing but healing and one clear, clearing process after another, all night long, for three, three hours. And then there's another hour and a half to two hours that you're going to get that's going to be done at a distance. And that, that hour and a half to two hours extends not only for you, but your immediate family members that are living in your home. I'll do, be doing a spiritual clearing on your home, property, grounds, and your family members living at home. That will be an at a distance spiritual clearing. And that's the one that's 189. That's so correct. Got it. Yeah. And I mean, it, in that appointment is, is, is the opening of five vital energy systems in the body. There is not just one. There is five. So far, I've found five of them. There's the chi system that we know of in Chinese acupuncture. There is an entirely different system that people think is the same system that is known as the pranic system of the body. It has all of its own chakras. It has another whole set of meridians. There are three more systems of energy, vital energy in the body that I have identified with their, with their own chakras and their own entire meridian systems that take this energy to the ends of the fingers, the toes, and every organ in the body. I need a drink. So there's, that's what the purpose of that evening is. Other things, we're going to clear the packs, contracts, agreements, the covenants, strings, and things like that. There's a million things that are cleared in that thing. I say it's at least 80 procedures. It's probably more, a lot more than that. Understand that, you know, a thousand clearings can be done for you in a matter of an hour. A thousand different clearings can be done for a person in an hour. Yeah. Smoking. Do what? How do you deal with addictions? Uh, the first thing is that the person has to want to quit. If they enjoy it and they want to continue, it's not going to help. I, I can't go into it to a great extent. But there's things that you can do that are causing the repetition. There's things that you can do to help relieve the stress. All the things you can do to help Right. Right. <clears throat> Let me find a volunteer for a moment. Let me see. I'm going to pick this one if you don't mind. Here, 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 here. Would you mind being my volunteer? Okay. What's your name? Kathy. Kathy. Come on up here if you would. <clears throat> Kathy's volunteered for me. <laughs> Kathy, I've got something for you here. This is one of the products of Phoenix Vibrational Healing. I call them transformational bliss, essences and elixirs. This remedy right here is called Remove Blocks to Vibrational Remedies Slash Abuse. I developed this 
to take down frequency blocking in the body-mind field complex. There are certain people, we all do it to one extent or another, but some people do it to even greater extents. We block beneficial and nurturing frequencies coming into our field. I call these people frequency blockers. There's a brochure back there on this remedy that you get when you buy the remedy. And if you want to know if you need the remedy, one of my ladies back there would be more than happy to check you to make sure that you're going to benefit from it. We don't want to sell you this remedy if you don't need it. If you're a healer and you've got a bottle of this and you give somebody two drops of it, it'll drop their frequency blocking in by 50% with just two drops the first dose. All right, and so it's Kathy, right? Yes. Let me see your arm if I could, Kathy. This body's clear to give and receive 100% true and accurate information now and hold. Yes, it is. To what extent, Kathy, are you blocking beneficial and nurturing frequencies coming into your field from on high and out of the creative ethers? And that figure is more than 50% and hold. More than 60% and hold. More than 70% and hold. More than 80% and hold. It's seeming to drop around 80%, more than 75% and hold, more than 78% and hold, about 78%, it's starting to drop about 78%. So we got a figure here, 78%, right? We're going to give her one dose. We're going to give her two drops of this. There's nothing physical in here but water and alcohol. This is a vibrational remedy, very powerful. So we're going to give her two drops under the tongue if you don't mind. One, two, there we go. And now if you would, would you breathe for us? And you may feel something going on as she does that breathing. In through the nose and out through the mouth. Just breathe very deeply, let it go. Don't hold it in, just let it go. One of the things I found, I studied sound therapy and I co sound therapy for a couple of years and, and the reason that I developed this is because we would have clients come in and we're going to do a two-hour appointment on them but they fr block in frequencies even sound frequencies to such an extent that a two-hour appointment is going to be a 10-hour appointment well we can't work with them for 10 hours so we send them home with a bottle of this they come back about two weeks later after they finish the little bottle a couple drops a couple times a day and they're at almost zero or zero percent frequency blocking. Now you've got a two-hour appointment. You don't have a ten-hour appointment anymore. See, so that's why I developed this. But it's on every level. It would be homeopathically, anything, you know. So only a very small proportion of things like that that Kathy's taken are fully benefiting her. You see. So she's going to have an acceleration and be able to get greater help out of, out of any healing modality. Interestingly, the light encoded geometry doesn't have a block to this. The sacred healing codes and symbols will go right into the field and they'll alter it and they'll, and they'll work, do their work, period. They, they're not blocked. But every other form of energetic healing of any kind or what you call energetic healing for the most part is blocked to a certain extent. And it was like, what, 78% or so? Yeah. Uh, yeah, here we go. Let me see your arm if I could. You feel something going on? Excellent. All right. To what extent is she blocking? Is Kathy blocking beneficial and nurturing frequencies coming in from the creative ethers and from on high now at this time? More than 30% and hold. More than 35% and hold. And the arm drops at 35%. More than 31% and hold. More than 32% and hold. More than 33% and hold. I felt the energy field collapse right there. 33%. So we went from 78% to 33% in about three minutes, right? Yeah. Now, when she takes the next dose, if she decides to get a bottle of this, for another percent and another percent and another percent. But that first dose will knock 50% off of it. So if you're a healing practitioner and you get somebody that walks through there, a dose of this right here, right before you begin a healing process, your healing work will be 50%, 100% actually, more effective. Because you're going to reduce half of their blockage. You got me covered? You cut it in half, then the healing work is twice as effective. This is called Blocks to Vibrational Remedies. Thank you for being our witness. Yeah. <laughs> now I've got to tell you that was really mild 
when she did all that breathing right there, that was mild to me. I didn't feel a massive process come out of her. But the, the work still got done nonetheless. And Kathy's a healer, so she may, she may have transmuted it more effectively, easier, whatever. But I've given people a dose of this right here, and it's just massive waves of energy just getting released in their field throughout the room. <clears throat> There's a number of products back there. Um, if you don't do anything else at all, check out those code cards. Could I have a code card? Give me a laminated code card, Lisa, if you would. I'll show you. Here's one right here. This lady's got one. Thank you. This is what I call a harmonic energy code card. This thing repolarizes your energy field. You just stick it in a pocket so that it's no, no longer so severely impacted by a host of things. These fluorescent lights, electromagnetic pollution, uh, geopathic stress zones emanating from underground. I teach all this work too, by the way, in a workshop called Harmonizing Your Environment. So I, I worked with noxious energy abatement forever. And I taught this going all the way back into the early 1980s. Someone volunteer for me, if you would. Come on up then. And what we're going to do, I'm sorry, your name? Terry. Terry. Let me see the arm here. This body's clear to give and receive 100% true and accurate information now and hold. Now we're going to proceed right over here to this wall switch, if you would. I want you to just reach out there and touch it. Just reach out there and touch someone. Understand that thing's putting out an electromagnetic this big around. If the wire's right here, it's about two feet in diameter, right? And we're going to check our body here now and hold. And look how weak this has gone, just from touching that. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to stick that right there on our chest and have her touch it again and hold. And look how strong it is now. So it repolarizes the human. Geez, I could hang off that baby. I could hang off that arm. It repolarizes the energy field so that these things no longer negatively impact it. We're talking about computer screens and CRTs and we're talking about television screens and we're talking about geopathic stress zones. Do you know what a geopathic stress zone is? The earth emanates energy. The earth has a series of energetic grid lines all over it. It's like the meridian system of the earth. Wherever they intersect it creates a vortex. Those vortexes are very often noxious. If you've got these things in your home, especially if you're sleeping in these zones, then it twists your energy field, your subtle bodies, all night long. You have a difficult time sleeping. What, one of the things that it'll do is it'll knock you out. If you've got an easy chair, you lay back in it, boom, you're gone. Do you know what I'm saying? Then it's in a noxious energy zone. Cats love negative energy zones and dogs don't like them at all. So if you see a dog walk around in a circle right there trying to find a place to lay down, he's testing the energy before he lays down there. He won't, if you don't, if you don't force him to, lay down in a noxious energy zone. Cats absorb negative energy. So why is it that so many New Thought people and healers have cats? Because they sit there on them all the time pulling negative energy out of them. Do you see what I'm saying? They thrive off of negative energy. All right, so, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if you all know these things or not. This is very interesting stuff. Terry, help me here again, if you would. Where's that little card? I'll show you, an, I'll show you a, a global grid stress line. I teach how to go about locating these things and everything. I'm just going to walk right down through here until I find a zone where, boom, right there, right there. All right, and so I'm going, let's see here. Uh, I'll just set my car keys down right there. Come on up here, Terry. And what we're going to do is we're going to check you over here and hold. Now just step over those keys right there. There you go. And hold. And look at this, see? This is a vortex, a negative energy zone, geopathic stress zone that's stressing our whole energy field. Hold. That's amazing. Thank you, dear. Yes. That's $11. They make devices for three or $400 that can't do what that little $11 card can do right there. And that works with computers. Yeah, it helps tremendously. Understand there's so many different things that are being exuded by a computer. Now, that's the one you carry in your pocket. It's laminate. It's 11 bucks. But what you do is you get you another set to go on your property and you bury them at the four corners of your property. They're made out of paper and they just rot. And so it, it creates this field of protection around your entire property, okay? You never have to do it again. The vitality of the soil on your property is going to go through the roof. 
I've got an ornamental tree in my yard that I buried and uh, planted. It was an inch and a half in diameter. This thing doesn't get much more than about 20 feet tall. Right now, it has a trunk that's uh, almost two feet in diameter, and it's ripping up my sidewalks. So. <laughs> If you, were, if you were to plant this on crop land, you could increase the yield of the growth of crops probably a minimum by 50%. It, it absolutely takes this, the general vitality of the soil and runs it right through the roof. There's just a lot of advantages to these things and they're cheap. 20 bucks, you put them on your property, you know? Now the other thing that it does is it takes, it takes discordant and negative forces and finds a way out for them to get off of a property. So when people come in there and they got negative energy on them and stuff like that, do you understand what I'm saying? Then they start letting go of it. They start letting go of it so it doesn't hang around your property. And then if you want to go one step further, there's a product back there called the Universal Peace Essence. You have to have the code cards on your property, but basically what this is, is it's a negative energy force shield. And you just take it and put about 10 or 15 drops in one of those sprinkle bottles with a little pop top on it, and you distribute it all around your property. And discordant energy just doesn't like that at all. <laughs> so it, a lot of it's just plain lead, you see. Yes? Yes, I put that there. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. There's a lot that goes into these products. These things are multidimensional products, but they're extremely reasonable. And you know, if you decide you want some, there's many other products back there. I'm going to tell you about one more. It's a product called Psychic Energy and Protect. Psychic Protection, what is it called? Personal and Psychic Protection Essence. It only took me five years to make it, and now I can't remember what it's called. <clears throat> Have you ever gone into a, a mall or a department store and you're in there for about 30 minutes and you feel like you're about to crawl out of your skin? Have, do you feel like your head is spinning like a top and you can't get your bearings right? Do you go into a movie theater and watch a movie and have to go outside and sit down on the ground for a while before you can get in your car and drive off because you feel like such a space case that you're totally ungrounded? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? I, I can go on and on and on. But basically what this stuff does, let me have a bottle of it if you would, Lisa. <coughs> you take this stuff and you put it on and it's like a psychic protection spray. There's about five different ways you can go about using it. This is only one of the products. Are a, uh, number one seller. A number one seller. Oh, wow. It also has a, a proprietary blend of essential oils in it. You just take a couple of sprays and put it right here on your Altimajor chakra. There we go. And then you take a little of that, bring it up here and smear it across your third eye. You can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil. <laughs> huh? This is a $30 bottle. It'll go a long way. So what, what you're going to find is whenever you think you're going to be exposed to a toxic person or environment, you just take and put a little bit of this stuff on right here. A couple of those sprays is all this takes. And you can sit there and, and deal with a situation that you have never been able to deal with before. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right. That's what this is. It's real good stuff. You know what? It's been my pleasure to serve you here tonight. Um, I'll tell you something else. Let me, do you have time for me to do one more clearing for you? All right. You do? All right, then I'm going to do one really powerful clearing for you. How about it? I'm going to explain to you what we're going to clear. We're going to clear what are known as the bodies of consciousness. The bodies of consciousness are not like the subtle physical bodies that I enumerated up here on the board a little while ago. These bodies are comprised of consciousness. They are like shells around your field, one after another, after another, after another, shells within shells. To the extent that one of those bodies of consciousness is blocked up, say 70%, then you can't get your discord out but 30%, and you can't get beneficial and nurturing energies into your field but to a level of 30%. This is how it works. You have an emotionally trying situation. You go into an emotional trauma, basically, right? And you 
what you do is you will and you intend it for it to to clear out of your field. You might breathe, you might do anything, but say if it's 70% blocked one of these fields, only 30% of it gets out. The other 70% comes back and ricochets back upon you. This is the number one cause of circuitous processing in a human body-mind field complex. Tonight I would like to open that for you if you'd like to do that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is uncross your arms and legs. If you have any pendants on, please take them off again. This is a major clearing. This is my gift to you from Phoenix Vibrational Healing this night. This is part of the group appointment on Tuesday night. This is one of the primary clearings. Okay, so I'm going to clear everybody to give and receive. <laughs> Anchor lock seal. Thank you, Creator of all that is. This will only take a couple of minutes. in frequencies in perfect order of priority for each person here's eyes good at this time anchor lock seal thank you creator of all that is let's breathe very deeply in through your nose out through your mouth and will and choose to let go of it <laughs> Please, yes, breathe. Five, three, one, two, three, that's five, nine, five, four, three, nine, three, eight, six. This is major clearing here. Five, three, one, two, three, that's five, nine, five, five, six, five, four, three, eight, six, four, seven, three, that's five, nine, five. Do they? Sixteen cycles. Five, three, one, two, three, that's five, nine, five. You got about 2% more to go. I want you to will, choose, love, to transmute and let go of the rest of it now. Take a couple more breaths and let go of it. That's good. Now if you would, I want you to look up here at me. Get yourself back in your body. Okay? We're going to go through a series of procedures here. It's grounding exercises. And I don't want you flying out of here tonight. So I want you to state out loud, get myself back in this body. 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 Let's keep going. Keep your eyes open. Get myself back in this body. Get myself back in this body. Get myself back in this body. In this body. See your vision changing? Do you see your vision changing? You weren't in your body. Get myself back in this body. Get myself back in this body, okay? Now we're going to do another procedure here. You start at the back of your neck and you sweep right over the midline of your head to your nose. And you don't go any further and you come around the side of your head and you do it again. This, and as you do this, you start at the back of your neck. As you do this, can you walk and chew bubble gum at the same time? You say, your full given name, including your maiden name, out loud. Out loud. Fred Edmund Payne Jr. 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 You'll see some of you are embarrassed by doing this, right? Fred Edmund Payne Jr. You're going to have to do this on Tuesday night. You've got to get back in your body. You can't be leaving here. I'm, I'm, I'm taking my hand and I'm going from the back of the neck right here, right straight over the top of my head to my nose and then around the side. Around the side. You don't stroke it backwards. <laughs> you know, I've seen people do things like this. 
You're having trouble with this one, aren't you, Terry? <laughs> you must be a Southpaw girl. I'm just playing with it. Yeah, right. These are grounding exercises. They're on the website. You know, it's... Yes, ma'am. Yes. I will encode this video. In other words, I will allow these clearings to, to go on go on to the onto the internet. Yes. Because I want people to know what Phoenix Vibrational Healing is about. And the the site the the Phoenix Vibrational Healing website is under fredpain.com right now. It is already energetically encoded. When you go there and you read it, you're going to get a healing. And then there's another whole section on there that's a, that's a self-clearing tool. And you can go in there and clear shock, panic, and trauma just by looking at a photograph and doing the clearing breath. I don't know if you know that this is available or not. It's under fredpain.com. Yeah. And you can, you can go there and you can get, you can get this. Um, later on, when I get it all finished and everything, it'll go up under phoenixvibrationalhealing.com. www dot fredpain dot com there it is there's many healing tools there that are right there on the website you know it's been my honor to be with you here this evening it's been a pleasure and thank you for being a witness to everybody else in the room here you all be gentle with yourself this night God bless yeah. thanks for coming yeah Thank you all. Yes, every